morning, everyone. Welcome to Sixth Convoke 2020. And uh, we are very happy to start on time. It's 10 o'clock. Let's start the event. Convoke, as all of you would have seen in the emails and the uh, link that would have come to you, it is a forum for uh, encouraging the teachers, especially from the rural areas, uh, to it's a, as a platform to encourage showcase their observation in a research-based forum. So to start this whole event inaugural session, I would like to welcome uh, Mamda Saikya, who is the CEO of Bharat Education, to welcome all our guests and also to set the tone of this Convoke 2020. Over to you, Mamda. Hi, uh, good morning. Um, good morning, Professor Shivastraji, um, uh, Mr. Ranganathan, um, a board member, Kadambri, um, Anthony, and rest of the participants. Um, I'm very excited today. Convoke started in 2017 and 18, and we started at a very small scale. Um, our objective like Anthony said, had always been to make sure that conversations around quality education reach rural India. You know, teachers and educationists in cities have a lot of exposure to conferences and workshops that are happening. They listen in to experts. They listen in when good practices are shared by other educationists. We felt having worked in rural India since uh, early 2000s, we felt this is a gap where um, our teachers and our educationists in rural India were not getting the kind of exposure they needed. Um, over 70% of our children, uh, they come from the villages of India. And it was only correct uh, that their teachers, uh, the school leaders, and various education administrators working in these cities, working in these areas, get good exposure. That's how we started Convoke. Um, we've always encouraged um, teachers from Satyapati schools, uh, teachers from government schools, and very, very importantly, be it students uh, to take part in Convoke, because the idea is that we all must start talking about uh, quality education, what, it, what kind of challenges that are being faced, and are there any good practices that can be shared? So I would really finish my thought now. Um, I'm very happy that this year we've received over 60 papers from educationists. Um, I'm really very happy that we've had a large number of participation um, at, from across the states. Um, I think we have had uh, papers from over 10 states um, this year, yeah. uh, which is very impressive. Um, I've seen a few papers myself. Um, they, the quality of papers is amazing. I'm planning to read a few of them myself. Um, so my hope is that Convoke would fill this large gap that exists um, which is encouraging um, educationists to look at education in a research mode, to constantly look at experimenting with new practices and try and do better every day in their classroom. Um, so thank you very much and all the best, Anthony. All the best to everybody. Uh, thank you, Mamda, for... Um... Uh, addressing and setting the tone for the whole convoke. And I would like to welcome formally Kadambari Anandram, Vice President of uh, Sambodhi Research Institute, it's a Research and Advisory Services. Uh, Sambodhi is also our jury partner who has evaluated all the papers and shortlisted the finalist 16 papers that are going to be presented uh, in this convoke. Over to you, Kadambari. Um, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be here and to um, 
e-meet all of you. Of course, I would have loved to do this um, face to face, and hopefully soon we could uh, we could, um, um, and that would be a you know that could be a possibility soon. Um, first and foremost, I would uh, like to thank and congratulate everyone who wrote in these papers. Um, there's been a lot of thought, structuring, and um, which has gone into these papers. And as a jury member, um, it gave me a lot of pleasure to read these papers. There were some extremely important points that were raised um, and, uh, and, and some very interesting ideas were explored. So thank you ever so much to all the teachers and the principals and the, uh, you know, the educators who wrote in. Um, I think that the theme of this year's um, conference is, is completely aligned with the zeitgeist or the spirit of our times, uh, which is COVID-19. Um, and therefore, I think as teachers, educators, policymakers in education, researchers, it becomes very, very important for us to reflect um, and grapple with uh, questions such as, uh, who is using accessing um, online education uh, platforms? Um, uh, you know, is this access gendered? Um, what happens to children when they actually learn in, in isolation um, as opposed to with their peers? Another very important theme uh, on which we got a lot of papers was on early childhood care, which is something which is being debated uh, quite hotly, uh, given uh, you know, the much needed attention uh, to the subject uh, in our new national education policy of 2020. And so some of the questions that we may want to ask ourselves here are, what are the kinds of systems and process changes that schools need to make um, so that they're really able to support children as they kick kickstart their learning journey? Uh, what do primary caregivers, and this could be teachers and this could be parents, um, uh, Anganwadi workers, uh, what, is the, what is their role in anchoring children, um, in, in, in helping them in, you know, in social, emotional, uh, physiological, behavioral, um, cognitive, um, uh, you know, changes uh, that they are sort of uh, going through um, in early uh, childhood? So um, just a couple of points that I would like to um, share with, um, with, with everybody, specifically the, the, you know, the, the teachers, the, the educators who wrote in. Um, as I was reading these papers, uh, the, the thing that actually uh, came to my mind is there is a lot of deep reflection which has gone into um, you know, the questions that are being asked. Um, and what I would like to do is just share a few thoughts on, uh, or my own reflections on, um, on the papers that I read. The first is, um, and this is sort of more on, um, and, and given sort of the, the, the spirit or the raison d'etre of Convoke itself is um, helping educators sort of think more deeply, helping them distill insights um, and helping them being action oriented and evidence-based um, educators. Um, in that spirit, uh, uh, a couple of points. Um, the first is um, I I see that uh, I would I would start off by saying that please be bothered, please uh, please be annoyed, be irritated by what you're seeing around you um, in the education space. Um, as I always joke and tell uh, uh, people, um, researchers are not happy people. We're always uh, bothered about something going around us. So please keep that spirit up. And that's sort of the starting point of any research or any investigation is this botheration. Um, so please reflect on what's bothering you and why it's bothering you. Uh, we've had some fantastic research questions that have come in. Um, I mean, there was a paper uh, which, which spoke about, you know, why are girls not engaging in STEM education, which I think is an absolutely critical question for which we have no answers. Uh, the second question was, why are children's handwriting uh, in kindergarten so bad? Uh, that's because we're not paying attention to their gross and fine motor skills. Or um, a paper which I read and saying, are children truly happy uh, in a holistic sense that they're actually learning in isolation? Um, my only submission here would be is that uh, these questions sort of come to you, obviously, when you're talking to, you know, uh, uh, 
colleagues in a staff room or you know it's something that you read in the news or it's something that you yourself have picked up because of your deep experience being in the field and, and working with children of all ages um my only submission here would be is that research doesn't end with a review of a national education policy or of the early childhood care policy research actually begins after that right which facet of the national education policy is bothering you which facet of the way ECCE is being treated in the NEP is bothering you do you actually think it makes sense for children uh, up to the age of 5 to learn in, in in their mother tongue does it make sense to keep children up to the age of 8 in foundational learning i have, we have, none of us have answers for this but it's important to remember that a review is not research it is the review has to agitate you it has to trigger a question so i would urge you all to spend some a little more time in 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 getting bothered um the second piece is um what i would like to see in 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 and and And, and I think we have made great progress. Uh, the quality of papers, as 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 uh, Mamta was talking about, has been fantastic this year. Um, I would like us to sort of think a little more deeply on what what are we seeing around us on on research questions that bother us, right? What's the writing which is happening? Is it newspapers? Is it articles? What are journals, blogs? Um, are there parliament questions? Uh, who's saying what? about uh, the topic which is bothering you if you're still bothered and which you should be and i think we've made again great progress this year go out and conduct primary research as educators you've got access to children you've got access to parents of children you've got access to other educators um do go out and and conduct primary uh, research um and i think this is really important because you find uh, i find that a lot of good comes out of disharmony and discordance in thought um uh, 90% of the people may not think along the same lines as what you're thinking and that's great um i think disagreement and discordance especially in some things which is so vital as education is extremely important to extremely important so please explore that form your own opinions distill those insights and 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 be completely okay if you are a bit of a maverick in your own thinking around it um the last point and i think um this is this becomes uh, and and this is sort of something that needn't be uh, uh, sort of driven home because everybody here is is an educator is think a little bit deeply on what we want to do with that research for example i read a paper uh, uh, which really struck a deep chord with me um which is on the role of parents in early childhood care and education um we know that there is a role of primary caregivers um and the paper actually had done a bunch of case studies had spoken to parents and and collected garnered information on their thoughts on what their ideas were on early childhood care um there's some great insights but i would sort of say what would you do as an educator with that um would you sort of bring parents together in uh, a parent teacher association of course now it, uh, virtually um so i would say that the the the, the crux of, of of being bothered the crux of distilling insights is actually to do something with it um which is evidence based action um and i think that uh, that's something that i would i would um, love to see in uh, the next time i sort of participate in convoc is to say uh, you know what have our educators done and what have we done in 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 actually um, say maybe thinking about implementing a couple of these ideas these great ideas that that all of you have come up with um so i'll end here i won't uh, i won't take up more of your time but i'm uh, very happy to to connect with the uh, with everybody who's 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 on this um, conference and i'm here for the next two days and delighted to to have um, discussions and actually looking forward to uh, discussing and chatting with you all so thanks a lot and um, and again as i said delighted to be here and looking forward to several more years of the conference thank you kadambari for those uh, opening remarks as a jury partner Uh, next, I would like to warmly welcome Mr. V. B. Ranganathan, formerly senior partner, country leader of Anushan Yam, and uh, as a governing board member of Bharti Foundation, he has been really motivating and encouraging us to go and push more on this research and evidence-based programming. 
So welcome to you, sir, and over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Anthony. Uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, I also welcome Dr. Srivatsva, uh, who is on the panel today and who is our chief guest. Uh, I'm very happy to be amongst uh, all of you as we do this uh, inaugural session of this uh, sixth edition of uh, Convoke. Uh, the theme for uh, Convoke 2020 is uh, towards school excellence, enabling girl child empowerment through education. Bhati Foundation has always been focused on the girl child and I'm very happy that you're carrying this forward as one of the themes of the Convoke 2020. I have uh, noted that uh, there are six sub themes to the main theme. I'm not going to get into the details and the nuances of the issues before us that keeps changing. But I must say the students as they enter life and work in the 21st century need uh, specific skill sets. At Bharti Foundation, we have uh, always been in the forefront to address these emerging challenges, to keep children and to help the children and teachers in rural India. And Convoke series are one of the founding pillars to foster a community of well-equipped teachers who think independently. We are uh, seriously conscious that we must prepare all children in rural India to face the challenges of a rapidly changing world that demand a variety of skills. Fundamental to acquiring specific skills are the basic aptitudes of creativity. That is the ability to be resourceful and innovative with analytical diagnostic thinking abilities, a solution oriented approach, and of course the skills for communication and collaboration. Well, if teachers are expected to equip the students with these attributes, the teacher preparation program should enable them to learn, develop, and practice these skills. This is what the Convo promotes through creating a climate of spirit of inquiry, boosting their abilities to think independently and work as a cohesive collaborating team to help our children in rural India. I'm happy that we have teachers and principals from government schools, Kendra Vidyalaya, Navodaya, government aided schools and private schools that are functioning in rural India who have participated in this program. Thank you once again for this opportunity to be with you all this morning. Now we look forward to the keynote address by our chief guest, Dr. Srivatsava. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for those encouraging words. As all of you are aware, the NCRT, which is the heart of education system in the country, it is the NCRT who just gives, you know, as though we are pumping blood to all the veins in the education system in the country. And we are very happy and thankful to Dr. Sridhar Shivastava, Joint Director NCRT, and also Director in charge of NCRT at this time who is also chairman in charge of NIOS, who has experience of more than 27 years of active service, which includes as lecturer in statistics at Mahamna Gandhi Chitrakut Gamode Vidyalay. And he has been also reader in education statistics, professor of education survey, and he has got a lot of work to his credit. He has established various systems and processes. And it is our great honor to welcome you, sir, and also, all of us are eagerly waiting for your keynote address. 
and also to formally inaugurate this Convoke sixth edition. Thank you once again for coming to this uh, Convoke as Chief Guest of inaugural session, sir. Over to you, Dr. Sridhar Shivastav. Uh, a very good morning to you all. And uh, uh, I'm really uh, delighted uh, to be connected with these dignitaries today who are virtually connected on this sixth edition of Convoke. Antony, I'm audible, I guess. Yes, sir. We can yeah. hear you. We can see you clear. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, when Anthony was mentioning about NCERT, and he he used a sentence that it spreads the, the blood in the veins of the school system, I was feeling that uh, a great responsibility uh, is on my shoulder in spending 15 minutes here today on the convoc. Uh, uh, really, it is a great opportunity for me, and I am thankful to Bharti Foundation. Uh, you all know that uh, we are today discussing about the things, and we have the national education policy before us. And uh, uh, certain principles are given there. The principles are mentioned in any such document, and we all know that given uh, uh, within the constitutional uh, targets or perspective before us, uh, it's a very uh, important uh, principle that we have to provide the equitable and vibrant knowledge society. And this is as a principle, but a few other principles which the policy mentions, I would like to reiterate. One is that the unique capabilities of children or a child should be identified and nurtured. And also one of the principles that the policy mentions that emphasize on conceptual learning to move ahead of road memorization. And we have to respect the diversity and we have to respect the local context. And uh, these are the principles I was just wanted to reiterate. And if you, uh, I recall it very vividly that when I was there uh, connected with the Convoke on fifth edition, I was talking about a lot of skills that we need to be uh, accomplished by the child skills and competencies. But we all know that uh, this 2020 has given us an opportunity, and I would use the word that is a very tough opportunity to re reflect on the whole school system because you know we are in the pandemic situation uh, and pandemic is a situation which has not only impacted the life more than that it is impacting the livelihood so in this situation when we talk of all these things and as the topic says that uh, the topic of this convoke today which says about the girl child and uh, towards school excellence enabling empowerment of uh, uh, girl child okay so in this situation uh, if we uh, want to reflect upon so i would say that the national education policy 2020 very clearly mentions something which we should think about and read about it mentions about socially, economically disadvantaged group. And it identifies this SEDG, they, the acronym they have used in the policy document. It says that it is it can be characterized by different identities, be it the gender, like uh, female or transgender. So, and be it the socio-cultural I, uh, identities like uh, scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, or OBC, or different kind uh, among the tribes also. Be it the lo uh, location, the identity could be the location, location, rural area, aspirational districts, or uh, the small town, or the border border districts. So what I'm trying to say that socially economically disadvantaged groups the policy mentions very well 
and policy says about working for such SEDG. But what is the real issue? In fact, uh, the, these concerns have been there in the earlier policies also. But we as a stakeholder, and CRT as an organization or the different agencies, government agencies, schools, teachers, or different stakeholders, state governments. One point I have been uh, very, very, means repeatedly I have been saying that when we talk about the stakeholders of the school system, we should also consider that parents are a very, very important stakeholders in the whole school system. And uh, I was happy when Kadambri was uh, uh, mentioning about a paper of, uh, on early childhood education and the role of parents. I was really uh, happy that uh, the point I am just saying was echoed by Kadambri also, that parents are a very important stakeholders. I tell you that uh, when I, I am just mentioning about uh, SEDGs. Uh, probably you will agree with me that uh, nowadays there are certain children, group of children or the situation if they are not categorized by the SEDG, but within their family, they are so hard pressed, they are so pressurized by different issues of the school system and they are not able to share it with anybody and their only parents can lend a role of pacifying the children or just bringing them out of their mental situation. And why I'm saying this because presently NCRT is handling a very important aspect that is the mental health of the children and we started it in the pandemic situation we have a dedicated uh, whole cell for that manodarpan there we are coming to know all these issues and then uh, as uh, a, the architect one of the architects of uh, national education policy kasturi ranganji mentions everywhere that we are heading towards a situation where 50% of the population will be below the age of 35 years. 35 years of age includes the schooling or even the university education or higher education and about six to seven or eight years grappling or just uh, searching for joining the world of work. A lot of issues are coming up and a lot of problems are there. It is with the girl child, it is with any child. So now coming to the options, these are the problems probably I spoke about. Now coming to the options, what we have before us in this canvas of the national education policy provisions or different uh, targets that the policy is giving to us. You see, there is a very, very important point that the policy says, which is, uh, I just uh, referred the chapter four. Chapter four, which mentions about the curricular and pedagogical issues in the school system. Although I personally consider that these issues, which is given in the chapter four that pertains to higher education also, and it is separately given in the higher education chapters also, the issues or the points. But if you see the chapter four, it mentions very, very clearly, and we should now uh, agree as a stakeholder that we have to erase the hard boundaries among certain things. It mentions that there should be no hard boundaries as regard to stream, arts, science, or social science. There should be no hard boundaries as regard to curricular, co-curricular, or extracurricular activities. There should be no hard boundaries 
between the academic stream and the vocational stream. And I tell you, friends, this is a very, very important point that the policy says. And this I am saying based on my experience as chairman National Institute of Open Schooling, I'm learning a lot of things. I tell you, we as a school system has really missed certain things. Uh, you people might have learned or known about Malvika Joshi. Uh, many of you might have heard about that girl who after reaching to class seventh preferred to unschool and just coming out of school and her parents supported her. She was not really interested in going to school. This is, a, this is an example of Mumbai. You can Google it. And there the mother and the father supported the child and that child was not in a formal school system. And she performed in many international Olympiads. And she got a full paid scholarship for research in MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She was not accepted or not even touched the gate of entry in our system of IIT or NIT. So what I'm trying to say that the alternative model of schooling that the policies mentions that is very important now to explore one second point no hard boundaries are very important thing no hard boundaries between the academic stream and the vocational stream is very important thing and i was mentioning that 50 percent of the population will be below the age of 35 if you minus the number that is about 24 or in certain cases even higher also some children are or some students are getting registered for phd so if you minus about 26 or 27 years so still they have seven to eight years for searching the jobs and you all must be aware that what kind of scenarios we are finding. And we talk about the, such reports from different uh, agencies like uh, CII or many agencies that the employability issues there with the graduates in Indian higher education system. To answer this issue, I personally feel that we should now not wait anymore and we should start from the things what is there posited in the policy. And I tell you, we at the government level, I in my personal capacity, I am seeing that now the government is very seriously thinking about that. You will be surprised to know that the agencies of the government are collaboratively thinking about all these issues. So frequent discussions, inter interactions, innovative discussions, how to roll out the policy. But why I am saying that parents are also a stakeholder? Because the tenets which are there in the policy should be taken to parents and parents should now also be made aware that they should come forward and they should not keep any hard boundaries in their mind. A child is pressurized to pursue engineering. Child is not that much interested. Child is good in mathematics, but not interested in chemistry. Child is interested in physics, mathematics. Child is interested in economics. Child is interested in political science. Child is interested in a good language or good performing arts. A girl child along with maths or physics might be interested in performing arts. She could be a good, she wants to be a good perform, performing artist. But the social ecosystem is like that. 
that no you are good at mathematics you should go for engineering you are good at physics you should go for engineering and this kind of uh, notions we are also holding that probably you will become an engineer you will get a good job but you all know them, that nowadays merely degree is not giving any job to any any candidate the kind of competency or skills that we require is slightly beyond that mere degree so this is the point which i wanted to make before you all and it is there and uh, i am uh, really very happy that uh, the kind of sessions which have been planned i i i was just seeing that uh, there is a last session which uh, um, where uh, we will be having jerry almaida also who who has written the karma kari and it's very interesting uh, you see he has mentioned in his book that how he got inspiration and he mentions about his work at uh, at a um, that uh, red light area and he mentions i was just reading his interview about two days ago so you see this kind of things are there and we ourselves also if you think it's a, i'm saying on my personal experience not any as a, as a academic thing that we ourselves if we think certain things we have learned not within the very space of the formal school space as a learning space we have learned not within a very, very formal uh, space that is called class so these kind of things are very important and one more point before i stop my words i would like to place before you all is that assessment is a very very important issue teachers are here and if i could very simply instill in their mind that if we talk about creativity or we talk about uh, critical thinking or problem solving creativity or innovativeness we talk about collaboration we talk about communication skills to be there in the children so we should be providing opportunity to children if we will not provide opportunity to children for enhancing these kind of skills or capabilities in them competency in them so will not be really doing in right term our best efforts if we will be at the end of summative evaluation we will be just pressurizing the children for their final exam their summative exam and we will not be providing them opportunity of experiential learning so we as a teacher are not doing our job because when they are going out they are being evaluated for all these kind of competencies and skills so teachers as uh, though students are not at fault we the teachers would be at fault so this was also a point that i wanted to make before you all and uh, the policy discuss about the 360 degree evaluation and uh, many uh, assessment reforms that the policy mentions about it is there and uh, uh, i would uh, urge all the delegates here that the policy document is not a very big document it is about 60 page document we should just turn the pages at least for the school system and try to just discuss within the group and uh, just try how in the day to day functioning we are doing something which meets with that uh, those uh, thoughts which are described there and uh, the most important point that i have found in the bharti foundation endeavor is that the foundation is working for the rural children uh, friends uh, i tell you that uh, it's a very very uh, means uh, confusing thing that uh, the the society has given importance to uh, in recent time to english medium education and the policy says it very clearly that the 
mother tongue or the child's family family language is to be given importance the reality what is there is that english language as a as an important tool of communication can be learned any time and uh, probably many of you or many of the persons who are connected or present in this convo would agree that we all have seen the days of our mother tongue education or hindi medium education or whatsoever and we have learned english as a tool of communication later on but as language carries a culture with it language carries the confidence that the uh, child is having in thinking so we should uh, give a space to the mother tongue education and the language of the child and there also we should feel that if we consider that the dominant mother tongue for example hindi i'm just from the hindi speaking uh, uh, i can't say about that so there also we should give space to the real mother tongue of the child for example if i say that my mother tongue so my mother tongue is not hindi my mother tongue is bhojpuri so what i'm trying to say that in the rural area also the teacher should be giving space to the mother tongue or the family language of the child wherever possible in the classroom space so these are the few points that i wanted to make in this uh, inaugural uh, session and uh, with these uh, words i stop here and i again uh, tender my very uh, deep gratitude for the foundation to give me this opportunity to share a few of my thoughts thank you thank you very much sir for those wonderful words and giving the keynote address for the inaugural session and formally inaugurating and as i can see in the chat there are many of the participants who have joined in are echoing all the various points and you know mm -hmm. truly agreeing to various points that you have mentioned and just to announce in inform all the panelists we have uh, about uh, 550 nearly 550 548 to be precise attendees who are attending this uh, webinar along with the panelists we have 579 people joined in zoom and we have another close to 400 people joined in facebook live as well so i can see the numbers are increasing as the time goes by so once again thank you sir for joining this session as the chief guest we would like to you know, uh, take this note to uh, appreciate all what you have done for us giving guidance from last year onwards how convoke needs to be taking to the next level i hope seeing this particular year you have uh, seen there's a kind of an improvement from previous year and uh, as a token of appreciation to all the speakers at this time we are not in a position to you know give anything uh, approximately so what we are doing is we are planting a tree in your name and that certificate will be dispatched to you uh at your address thank you very much all of you yeah. for joining this event and uh, we are going to start the session one right away and uh, we are just uh, 10 minutes late into the session so just like you know formally many things we start let the games begin dr shivastava has already given us the go ahead and uh, just like yeah. when we said let the games begin i mean that let the games begin we are going to have a quiz for all the participants who are there at the end of the day it's going to be a gaming quiz and we will also see who are the toppers in that we will be asking questions to all the attendees and we will be sending the google link uh, towards the end of the day so that we will be asking questions on various sessions that all of you have attended and we will announce the toppers in the concluding session so the next session is uh, no it's uh, it's a, another interesting session as we uh, proceed just like uh, dr shivastava has already talked about new education policy as a focus the first session is on new education policy as view and for this i am uh, very happy to welcome dr renu singh country director young lives over 27 years of experience in school management teacher education policy analysis research both in india and abroad 
She is the founder of Young Lives India Research to Policy Center and is also the country director for Young Lives India, a longitudinal study on childhood poverty, University of Oxford. A trained educational psychologist, Montessorian and special educator. She was the head directress of a school in Dubai, UAE. She conceptualized and set up Center for Early Childhood Development Research, Jamia Milia Islamia, as well as School of Rehabilitation Science in University of Delhi. She held the position of Director, School of Rehabilitation Sciences, University of Delhi, Director Adi, and she has been, uh, she has been leading exchange of international best practices leading to innovation as SSA. It's a technical cooperation for do MHRD uh, as part of Save the Children India and was the lead investigator of USAID project on whole school development from 2003-7. She had uh, also been working as a governing board member of CBSC for two terms and has been part of various joint review missions organized by Ministry of Human Resource Development. And uh, when we were you know, planning to request Dr. Reno to be part of it, she has got a lot of good experience on childhood, early childhood as such. But we wanted her to share this session on new education policy because she is one of those person whom I have personally you know, worked with and uh, thought on the new on the policy reforms. It's something which is really admirable. So this is an opportunity for all of us to hear her while she is moderating the uh, sessions on new education policy, where we have three papers being presented. Uh, we have Adapu Ganesh, teacher from Telangana, Gautam Dutt, teacher from Government Senior Secondary School, Kurikshetra, Haryana. We have Jatin Garg, teacher, Satyabhardi Adar, Senior Secondary School, Janeri, Punjab. So these are the presenters for the day. And we are welcoming once again all the presenters and Dr. Renu Singh, who's the moderator. Thank you, Dr. Renu, for uh, uh, agreeing to be the moderator and over to you as uh, for moderating the session. Thank and, you very uh, much. Just to be, uh, sorry for, uh, we will be uh, you know, sharing the screen of the PPT as the presenters are being called in, just for your information. Thank you very much. Once again, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Namaskar. Uh, I know we are using English as the medium of, you know, uh, uh, today of, you know, uh, communication, but, um, and I'm happy to uh, speak in both Hindi and English, if that's what is, so I'm looking at the chat boxes to see, because I can see, I, uh, Ganesh from uh, Telangana is going to have it, have difficulty if I start speaking in Hindi, maybe, so, Maybe it's best to continue in English. Uh, but just to say that I'm really happy to be here. Um, and uh, congratulations uh, to Bharti Foundation for you know, setting up this. This is the first time I'm joining you on Convoke, of course. Uh, and I, I am, I'm sure there are going to be some very, very interesting papers that are going to be presented. Uh, the issue here is I can see in the chat box, no English mein baat kijiye, so Hindi, English dono mein baat karni chahiye, sahi hai. So I'm going to mix the two. Uh, I think what is really important is ke hum log, yaha par sab log jo mil rahe hai, we're going to be able to hear people who are working in the field, haan, jo zameen ke saath jude huye hai, kyunki wo bohat zaruri hai, ke hum un logon ki awaz sunne, jo zameen ke saath jude huye hai, hum log, mai bohat saalo se research kar rahe hai, haan. Lots of years of research uh, with the University of Oxford because I teach there. But the fact of the matter is that I always feel that when I was in class, when I was in school, when I was in the past, there were many issues that were in the past. I was in an organization and 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 I was in an organization. Talk to teachers, talk to children, talk to parents, talk to communities. Tabhi jaake hume samaj mein aata hai ki research kis tarah kis chiz kis mudde par kiya jaye. Because otherwise we are going to be constantly looking at things from offices, from within four walls, which are actually of no relevance. So I hope, and I'm going to not talk about the NEP, but 
मैं चाहूंगी कि नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी वेन वी आर डिस्कसिंग एंड रिव्यूइंग इट आई होप वी आर गोइंग टू बी हियरिंग इश्यूज ऑफ प्रैक्टिकल इम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ द एन ई पी बिकॉज आज हम उस मोड़ पर खड़े खड़े हैं जब हमें ये देखना है कि एन ई पी को हम किस तरह से लागू करेंगे या वॉट इज इट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू बी नीडिंग टू डू टू एक्चुअली रियलाइज द इन दई मीन आई थिंक द the formulators of the national education policy and lots of people who have contributed to actually the final version uh you know there is i think we we really really have a very very uh, i i would imagine a very hard task to achieve because hum log ye keh rahe hain ki hame hame us tarah ke reforms chahiye so that we have the highest quality equity and integrity in the education system right from early childhood एजुकेशन केयर एंड एजुकेशन थ्रू हायर एजुकेशन तो अगर हम बात कर रहे हैं गुणवत्ता की इक्विटी की क्वालिटी की तो किस तरह से वो आएगा अर्ली चाइल्डहुड से लेकर हायर एजुकेशन तक आई थिंक दो ह्यूज चैलेंजेस इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस बट ऑल्सो आई थिंक ऑब्जेक्टिव्स एंड गोल्स दैट वी ऑल वॉन्ट टू रियलाइज टूगेदर सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू यू नो टेक एनी मोर टाइम आई वॉन्ट टू फर्स्ट हियर वॉट द थ्री ऑफ यू यू नो स्पीकर thought of and are going to present to us um antony i just want to know what are the what is the time frame for each of the uh, presentations because i'm i'm a very hard task master i'm going to remind you I, one I know, before i know i can see already the one task you have given to the speaker challenge already you have thrown it that you have to speak some of the practical which i am sure after the presentation they will add on one or two minutes so we have requested the speakers to limit their presentation to 5 to 6 minutes Okay. So that, uh, three people will be able to finish in about uh, you know 18 to 20 minutes. Then we have some discussion with them. The question that you had already raised on the what are the practical implications? That's something which we can also discuss. In sure. the meantime, if we have some specific questions coming from the participant, that also will be sent across. Sure. So I think what we'll do is we I uh, we will we'll give you before you you know one minute before your six to seven minutes passes. I think we should be able to give you yeah. a little heads up to say please wrap up your presentations. Is We're that okay? Ring a bell. We are going to ring yeah. a bell. Yeah. Sure. So perfect. You. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. So should we start with Mr. Ganesh? Yep. Adipu Ganesh, uh, you can get your uh, yes. Already the PPT is being shared. Please, Mr. Ganesh. Please start. Good morning, madam. Good morning, all educationists. I am Arup Ganesh, high school teacher from Rajana Sirsila, Telangana. India has 25 crore chil children who will grow and transmit India, transmit India as biggest country with youth by 2030. As we all know, education. itself is the only tool to equality and justice 85 lakh teachers 15 lakh schools and many ngos have been continuously working for the improvement of schools now they are in need of super policy of education so that they can transform upcoming youth with holistic development next i have reviewed national education policy comparing with previous policies i have analyzed the gaps and needs created by previous policies and discussed the solutions given by nep 2020 next now let us have a look now let us have a look at national education policy we start from early childhood 73 years indian education system could not bring 2 crore children to pre primary schools says national sample survey and could not teach basic numeracy and literacy to 60% of students at elementary level national achievement survey says it to solve above problems nep proposed early childhood care and education for the age group age group of 3 to 8 years and foundational literacy and numeracy for the age group of 3 to 11 years balavatika proposed before first class with a trained teacher play activity based learning can help pre primary children to get basic competencies special national mission will work for acquiring basic literacy and numeracy by 2025 at primary level next 
as per district information system for education udas 2014 15 29% of boys and girls are dropping out of primary schools from from primary to elementary level and only 2% of schools are giving continuous education up to 12th grade to reach to reach these challenges nep proposed universal access to education up to 18 years to make teaching learning process more active and curious integrated curriculum with arts and sports is proposed next if you talk to a pers person in a language it goes into his his head and if you talk to the person in his own language it goes into his heart considering this point mother tongue is proposed as medium up to 8th class bilingual teaching and textbooks will help for more clear conceptual learning promoting indian culture teaching doing what is right will enhance students respect towards society next future of children future of nation depend on teachers nep is going to restore high status of teaching profession a good teacher is ever a student so that nep proposed minimum hours of continuous professional development for teachers fear of failure is the second highest cause of suicides in children so 10th and 12th grade board exams will become more easier which tests only core essentials of the subjects holistic progress card reflect students all round development other key findings are special emphasis on socially economically disadvantaged groups and boarding schools bagless days 21st century skills national educational technological forum next this slide shows comparison between previous policies and national education policy 2020 pedagogical pattern changed from 10 plus 2 to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 pattern compulsory education from 14 years to 18 years erasing rote learning promoting multidisciplinary learning choices of subjects previous school establishment system created some issues like lot of schools with less children many schools with single children single teacher and disturbed teacher pupil ratio to solve above issues nep suggested school complex system with sharing of teachers pairing schools etc next conclusion to fulfill the need of 30 crore children the key features like ecce foundational literacy and numeracy mother tongue as medium catering dropouts holistic development of students etc depend on proper implementation of nep 2020 the success of NEP mainly depends on three key factors and that are teachers, the pillars of educational building, implementation bodies and finance. All next. Allocation of insufficient funds to education, higher priority on paper and lower priority in implementation, non-collaboration among implementation bodies are primary obstacles while getting best results of educational policies. Next. My recommendations for the success of NEP are allocation of funds should be 6% of the GDP, good collaboration among stakeholders of NEP, recruitment of well-trained teachers, utilization of teachers in policy preparation, changing in RTE Act, legible instructions for socially, economically disadvantaged groups, and finally, I wanted to tell one thing that NEP just gives concepts in a broad way, but application under action can only give good outcomes. Hope all the stakeholders of NEP 2020 work good and transform Indian education by 2040. Next. This is the bibliography of my review. Next. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ganesh. Uh, that was a, a very uh, succinct and comprehensive, uh, you know, outline of the NEP. Thank you very much. I'm not going to, I'm going to reserve my comments till the last. So I think we'll move on to the next speaker, uh, Mr. Jatin Garg. 
Okay, so Mr. Gautam Dutt is going on. Uh, yeah. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning Martin to all dignitaries. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Madam, uh, this is my turn now. I, I think um, I, it's I, I, I've actually announced your name, but Mr. Gautam, that uh, presentation was up there, so I don't know. Uh, either ways, if, if you okay. want to go ahead, please go ahead, Mr. Gandhi. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So, good morning, uh, Jehim, to all. First of all, I would like to say uh, greetings, uh, warm greetings uh, for all the digna to all the dignitaries present in the uh, convoke organized by Bharti Foundation. I, Jatin Garg, uh, would like to uh, be uh, extend my uh, gratitude for giving me opportunity to present my paper today. So as we all know that uh, in the time of COVID-19, uh, we all have changed our mindset up towards various things. Uh, when we're talking about ECCE, that is Early Childhood Care and Education, uh, our mind setup has substantially impacted, I must say. So I'm here today to present my research paper uh, on changing mind setup towards uh, early childhood care and education in pre-COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 situation, a comparative account uh, with the impact of NEP 2020. Next, please. So in the chain scenario of, uh, we can say that automated uh, world and uh, uh, artificial intelligence, we all have got our new education policy 2020, uh, which was long due uh, revision. So before going to start with the crux of my uh, research paper, I would like to uh, explain few things about NEP 2020 in the context of ECE. So uh, perhaps uh, uh, the most significant envisioned by the NEP 2020 is at the very beginning of child's educational journey, the first step of the uh, leading ladder, I must say. So the critical importance of good quality early childhood education has been understood by experts for a long time. But by bringing ECCE uh, to the centers of education and by clearly stating this, that ECCE is the greatest and most powerful equalizer, and the EP 2020 has given the priority to building strong foundation early in a child life. Uh, the policy also states that the age group of three to eight uh, as a continuum. So mean to say the continuum, uh, the, uh, there is a, a continuum uh, is not only a conceptual construct, it will need to be operational in terms of provision approach curriculum. So the transition from pre-primary to primary uh, will have to be in such a way uh, like uh, the previous uh, uh, progress, uh, the progress, uh, uh, the progress we can say uh, coming uh, the uh, progress of coming years uh, will depend upon the learnings of the previous uh, years so it increased the focus on the foundational literacy and numeracy also which includes reading writing speaking counting and arithmetic and mathematical thinking uh, next please in this graph, uh, there is a slightly difference between, uh, I must not say slightly, uh, there is a difference between uh, uh, the new education policy and the existing education policy. Uh, here, I'm just going to talk about the foundational stage of five years, where they have divided these uh, foundational stage into sub parts. Uh, the very first one is three years for pre-primary Anganwadi uh, and uh, two years for class one and two. So here we can find the breakup age of uh, uh, starting the school is three to eight years, uh, whereas in the previous one, uh, this is six to 16. Uh, and moreover, preschools uh, to be added in the KVs uh, before uh, in the uh, in the previous academic structure, the pre uh, class one has started in the KVs. So, uh, with refer to this, I'm talking about uh, like more more the uh, most of the parents uh, before COVID-19 uh, were uh, always uh, sending their child even though less than uh, in the age of uh, three. So uh, it was an uh, unorganized structure, but uh, after introducing NEP 2020, we must say this uh, uh, this has a, a well-defined uh, age in which the child can uh, go in the age of three. Next, please. 
so early childhood care and education so i just want to add one thing here as per the educational psychologist the foundational age and early childhood age is the most impassionate age of uh, learning new things for life the impact of early years of child life lasts a lifetime so uh, with this next please uh, this is my research question states here uh, next please uh yes i have taken i have uh, as, as far as concern my methodology i have taken sampling method uh, that is uh, i have taken a 193 parent sample uh, for belongs to the different regions of punjab and analyze the results even though due to uh, present scenario i have taken google form uh, with set of questions having uh, 13 questions related to ecce and i have done one to one interaction with the parents and i got to know so many things uh, regarding uh, what they want in the uh, Uh, coming uh, sessions next please so these are the my key findings uh, i am talking about uh, when do you plan to send your child in school post covid 19 uh, so there are 29 parents uh, 29% parents have told uh, they were waiting message from schools and which is very good like they are keeping uh, trust on the school and when we talking about 23% parents uh, were uh, said that immediately after vaccination is available uh, as we all know that uh, there is no news till now uh, about the vaccination so uh, i have asked one question in case of vaccination is not available available would you like to send your child to school so there is a grand change 36% parents uh, said yes they will send their child uh, with proper precautions and they will uh, send uh, after checking the arrangements of the school there is 7% parents have told uh, like uh, they will uh, 7% parents have told that they will appoint tutor at uh, home which uh, i personally feel will be challenging for us next please so in the context of age when we are talking about uh, we got 29% data from 3 uh, to 3 uh, 3 years to 3.5 years uh, which parents have told like they will uh, they they were uh, willing to send their child before covid 19 uh, but uh, 35.50% parents 35% parents we must say uh, said uh, they will send their child above 5 years so it will again we can say uh, it will again a uh, great challenge for us uh, that how we can implement our uh, uh, nep 2020 because they have started from the 3 years next please this is my conclusion uh, like uh, 26% parents were there uh, who said that they have changed their uh, opinion to for sending child to preschool it is just because of covid 19 situations uh, next please so these are my recommendations parents faith is required in preschool and ecc centers ec centers should be neat and clean and with full equip facilities parents must be more aware about the diet health and hygiene but they need not to neglect the outdoor activities school management must have to go with the proper arrangements of hygiene and sanitization the teachers must be trained for delivering ecc to the toddlers and preschoolers next please uh, these are my bibliography refers uh, next with this uh, i'm very much thankful to all uh, for giving me opportunity to presenting my paper thank you ma'am Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Garg. Uh, and now we move on to Mr. Gautam Dutt uh, to present his paper on a turnaround of previous policies. Thank you, Mr. Dutt. Uh, good morning to all dignitaries and panelists. The point of discussion of my paper is NEP 2019: A Turnaround of Previous Policies in Reference to Secondary Education in India. next please slide next next slide please in post independence era uh, various uh, education policies or education commissions we have seen and we have witnessed uh, various education commissions and their recommendations in our education policy secondary education commission kothari commission and national education policy 86 our president dr apj abdul kalam has also emphasized need of value based education system that instills righteousness at a young age to make cultured citizenry capable of transforming india into a prosperous peaceful secure happy and developed nation that very much uh, motto 
has been instilled and has been fructified into NEP 2020. And the basis of this very much policy is Nai Shiksha Niti Kare Sakar Jan Yogyata or Rojgar. Uh, this is the basis and this is the main motto of this education policy, which is called National Education Policy 2020 and going to be implemented after the NCF 2021 is being drafted by the and uh, is being drafted by the NCERT. Next slide, please. Uh, we have to discuss here that whether NEP 2020 will address all present issues and challenges which impeded the previous policies to attain its targets. And uh, another question which arises here in context of NEP 2020, that will it be a successful leap towards self-reliant India, Atmanirbhar Bharat, which is being uh, talked about across the country and across the world? Will the NEP 2020 will strengthen the privileges to children uh, of the age 3 to 14 year in India as has been awarded to them in RTE 2009? Will the NEP 2020 will empower the teachers to face the challenges of 21st century and global education demands? And another issue which is to be discussed and is to be being taken forward towards the NEP 2020. Will the NEP 2020 will address the issues related to quality of education through Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat, which is being talked uh, all over the country and largely talked about in this NEP. Next slide, please. We can see here and we also uh, know that this is the fact that NEP uh, 2020 or 2019, which is told that all the previous education policies which have been uh, implemented uh, in post-independence era till now, all uh, have their impact on education system at their uh, at contemporary period. At that, uh, at that com contemporary period, these education policies were new education policies. But now we are expecting this very much policy, which has been drafted on, uh, with a grassroots level and uh, uh, across 6,600 uh, 6, village panchayats have also been included for suggestions in this NEP. What it says, uh, next slide, please. What I have uh, also uh, studied uh, by the NEP document has been illustrated in this table. New education policy as well as uh, the N uh, NPE, National Policy on Education 1986 has been compared here. Uh, we will go forward with the main suggestions which have been given in this, uh, which have been given in this table. Ministry of Education, which will now uh, which will now known as ministry of education which was known earlier as ministry of human resource and development 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 format including ecc in formal education system will be in effect in, uh, in spite of 10 plus 2 format ex, uh, which was ex excluding ecc early childhood care and education which is a most favorable aspect of this NEP was earlier neglected and ne never ever been a formal uh, a part of formal education system. Uh, point number four, examination pattern will be changed to objective and uh, descriptive and PARAH and NTA will be two major reforms and centralized uh, agencies, centralized for conducting examination, whether it is a uh, competitive exam or it is a pattern of assessment for across the country. Multidisciplinary course uh, with interdisciplinary choice will be a better fold of this uh, education policy as there have been a hard separation of discipline in previous policies and which will be, uh, which will provide various uh, opportunity to the students of their, for their taste. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, 
this is okay. Uh, curriculum will be reduced to core essentials. Uh, in earlier policies, there was a lengthy curriculum with various code contents with respect to modern world and modern aspect of the modern world. Uh, compulsory vocational subject from elementary still for imbibing skill in new generation. Earlier, there was no such provision and uh, there were only cramming of subjects in uh, while we, uh, when we were teaching the students. In this. Uh, the next is bagless uh, format and light weight of school bag will be encouraged. Students don't have such facility and they don't have this facility in earlier uh, system of education. Students' health card will be maintained and existing health program, MDM and kitchen garden in school will be strengthened and intensified. While in earlier policies, health cards are being maintained and MDM is being provided to the student, but the, pol the system will be strengthened and intensified. The major part of this uh, recommendations of this NEP is coding will be introduced from class six and sk as a skill subject. Uh, it was not a mandatory in existing format. Basically, uh, skill uh, which is being uh, more emphasized in uh, school system. Next slide, please. Next, please. Uh, three language system, state, regional, and choice of student is being introduced in this new education policies. However, there was a three language formula, but uh, regional and choice of student is the main point of this education policy, which will also uh, make capable the student to get the education in their own in their own mother tongue. Also, uh, preschooling system will be a part of formal education, as we have discussed earlier. That early childhood care and education will be a part of this uh, primary education and elementary education. It was not in a formal system uh, earlier. Uh, ECCE was not in a formal education system earlier. Report cards of the students and teacher will adopt a peer review mechanism to foster peer learning and group dynamics in educational institutions. Uh, no such provision is being seen in existing policy and prevailing education policies and prevailing education system. It is a, uh, it is going to be a drastic change when peer review mechanism uh, will foster and it is a, I think it is a better part of the uh, system. It will be a better part of the system if implemented correctly and implemented in, uh, with right intention. Teacher education curriculum will be revised and intensified. Mode of selection of teacher will be modified also. Existing curriculum and pattern of selection of teacher is facing stern criticism which has degraded the prestige of educational institution and teachers too. Uh, we can see the uh, teachers who are working in uh, our schools that uh, education curriculum and their training period, uh, their uh, training system and their training courses, they are need to be intensified and uh, with correct measure and with correct intention. Because uh, all know teacher is the main backbone of the education system. Uh, so teacher education curriculum will be revised and intensified. The uh, next point is e-content in regional language also that we can see that uh, draft of NEP was released in 23 languages with regional languages and in English and in Hindi and in Urdu. Uh, so the, uh, all e-contents are also will be encouraged and e-content will be available in regional languages which will foster the learning in mother tongue and uh, will make the resources available to a larger area of students and larger outreach uh, of the students. Next please. Uh, we can see the major, uh, major difference uh, between the two. Preschooling was a non-formal system and there will, uh, will be the 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 as uh, described as 5 years foundational stage, 3 years pedagogy stage, uh, 3 years middle stage and 4 years of secondary stage. Uh, this is the main basic, basically difference between the 
existing policy prevailing policies and coming nep next please uh, the points we uh, we had to discuss and we uh, the questions we raised uh, that whether the nep will address the present issue and challenges which impeded the previous policies i find it positive but only and only when the policy is implemented in its real sense in its real sense means uh, that uh, teachers would have to teachers would have uh, to work uh, with real intention with full uh, full devotion uh, and full enthusiasm and nep uh, the second question was which we had to discuss that nep 2020 will be a successful leap towards self reliant and atmanirbhar bharat yes it would be but uh, the question is the same the answer is the same that implementation of the policy will uh, or should be the implementation of the policy should be in full sense full enthusiasm and with full vigorness will the nep strengthen the privileges this is the main question which uh, on the and main point on the basis the nep is being criticized also that will it curtail the uh, rte 2009 uh, privileges Uh, through uh, when we talk about the complex school and the reach of the uh, reach of the school will be curtailed if we talk about the complex school and shut the schools will having the low enrollment in the area no uh, i here also i uh, find i found i find is positive that if the policy is implemented with full intention and full vigor and uh, with right intention and right implement uh, implementation methodology it will success and it will not harm or it will not constrain the outreach of the uh, school and students next please will the nep 2020 empower the teacher to face the challenges of 21st century and global education demand yes as we have also talked about that nep uh, the uh, selection process of the teacher will be changed and the teacher education curriculum will also be changed and revised and intensified then uh, we can say that uh, teacher will be able to face the global demands teacher will uh, will be empowered to face the challenges of the 21st century uh, the last question which arises here uh, and which we will answer to the question the nep 2020 will address the issue related to the quality of education through ek bharat shreshth bharat uh, it is also uh, seen in the sahoday complexes and navodaya vidyalayas that cross cultural programs are uh, imbibed or organized for the help for help of the students so ek bharat shreshth bharat which is being emphasized in the nep or which is also seen uh, as a leap toward nep 2020 will provide the various opportunity and will encourage the regional language across the nation and through cross cultural educational initiatives thank you renu you are on mute renu you are on mute thank you very much mr dat um and thank you to all three presenters um antony how much time do we have for question and answers yes i think we'll take about another 6 minutes maybe one question to each of the speakers Yes. And you know you are to wind up five minutes so that you know in another ten to twelve minutes sure. we will be able to wind up. Sure. Because we start with the session about ten minutes, fifteen minutes late. Sure. So could we have the questions uh, to you know to the three speakers and please tell us uh, who you want to address the question to? No, I I I don't see there are too I many. Think Yeah, so I think what I do is, question. I think yeah. the question that you have asked in the beginning, I think that question can be addressed to all the three. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, I I just want to uh, you know ask uh, all three of you have done a policy review, yeah, 
and you've also uh, looked at some of the earlier policies. Um, before I jump into the implementation challenges, uh, Mr. Gautam Dutt has made it very simplistic to say that we will be able to reach all the hypotheses are proven in terms of, you know, NEP will transform teacher training, it will empower teachers. I wish it was as easy as that because we will, the, the evidence is the, that we will get from the ground and changes of reform that we will see in the next five to six years is what will inform these very important questions that Mr. Dutt has raised. I don't think at this point any of us can say whether this will or will not be achieved. Uh, of course, intentions are there, uh, but I think I, I would like to ask each of the three uh, you know, presenters to tell me what in their mind they feel is the cha big challenge to implementation of the policy and what in their mind we can actually do in terms of making some very concrete steps to address them. Mr. Ganesh, you, would you like to go for? Yeah. Please. Hello. Yes. Uh, ma'am, uh, Gautam Dutt, ma'am. Uh, as we. I think Mr. Ganesh is speaking. Yeah. Mr. Ganesh, please. Ma'am, I could not understand what you said. Okay. So I am asking Mr. Ganesh, your whole presentation was on looking at your, uh, you know, the comparisons you did. You, I want you to tell me, because you actually were the one person who said the three challenges are finance, implementation, yes, uh, implementation bodies and teachers. Yeah, you actually brought forth that point. Uh -huh. Yeah, so... Tell me what do you feel we, we need to do to actually address the challenges of implementing NEP 2020 successfully. Madam, okay. I have already, ma'am, thank you uh, for asking me this. Ma'am, I, I have already recommended some, some things. Uh, I'm, I'm asking gov gov governments, central and state governments to allocate uh, 6% of GDP funds to implement this program perfectly. Mm -hmm. And uh, all stakeholders, implementation bodies, uh, collaboration is needed for good implementation of this NEP. Well-trained teachers, continuous professional development of the teachers is required for the success of NEP. Yeah. So, Mr. Uh, Ganesh, how would this professional development happen? So, I'm not going to get into the uh, financial uh, aspects. Yes, yes. I, I am not going to touch on the financial aspects because I think this year we will have to really see very carefully whether even the, the current allocation is going to be spent, you know, and how it's going to be spent. Uh, uh, so, I think that is I, I, going to be moving beyond the finances, which is very important because resources are at the heart of making any reform happen. Uh, but I just want to ask you, even professional development, how do you think this will happen? Madam, it will happen. NEP suggested a minimum 50 hours of uh, 50 hours of uh, professional development is needed. Uh, right. There are school complexes uh, with radius of 10 to 15 kilometers. Uh, in these school complexes, teachers can discuss, can develop their knowledge among uh, each other. So through these school complexes and without finance, uh, with limited finance, we can develop a continuous professional development, madam. So are you suggesting, Mr. Ganesh, that we should uh, identify uh, coaches and mentors within yes. these school huh. complexes who will then support, you know, in professional development of teachers within these school complexes on a more regular ongoing mentoring basis? Yes, madam, that is um, Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, I, thank you. I, thank you very much, Mr. Dennis. Mr. Uh, Gulf and Mr. Gautam, any of you want to speak? Uh, just one. Sorry, ma'am, yes. for disturbing. I'm yes. Anisha, uh, Anisha from Sambodhi. Yes. Uh, I just had one question. Like, I completely agree with what ma'am said about the financials and considering the. I just wanted to ask question to Mr. Ganesh that does he think that just by increasing financials, can you uh, be able to you know bring about the change because it's not always the case that there's a direct relation between the increasing finance and is there any way he can suggest on how the government can with the increasing uh, not just increasing but the existing financials also can make a difference 
And I'm so sorry, ma'am, for the interruption. Ram, I think he's already answered the question when he said that within the school complexes, you don't need to spend any money. So I think he's already given a very good example of exactly the question you asked. I'm going to just move on to the next uh, panelist, Mr. Garg and Mr. Gautam Dutt. Would you like to? Uh, ma'am, should I? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, ma'am, as per my opinion, like uh, uh, parents are very much conscious about the health of a uh, uh, child. So, uh, I just want to tell you that uh, we can uh, the school systems and the preschool uh, and the ECE centers uh, they must have to uh, start good uh, programs. Uh, even though for they must have to take care of the sanitization and uh, hygiene. Because if we want to keep the interest of the parents in the school and if we want to keep uh, trust of uh, parents on schools, uh, we need to be uh, stick towards uh, uh, precautions of uh, this pandemic. Thank okay. you. So your, your suggestion is that if we want children to come back to uh, the early, early childhood centers and other uh, areas, we need to make sure. And I think this, this pertains to everything, even schools, whether it's middle schools. I mean, I think without that, but yes, I think we need to really, really focus on that aspect going forward. How will provisions be made? How will safety be? Uh, you know, running water is a huge issue. It's not just, you know, so if we want washing of hands, is there running water? Uh, I think we need to look at all those very important practical implications in the field. And I think you all are very aware of that. Yes, Mr. Dutt. Thank you, Mr. Bank. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, I have a different, a politely a different opinion about the finance because uh, as much as the power input or uh, finance is inputted, if we have not an intention uh, to make development or in, uh, right intention, uh, there will be corruption. Uh, so as far as we can see that uh, the learning can go on uh, uh, under a banyan tree also. Until, unless the teachers are not trained to uh, do their work with devotion, full spirit and right intention. Uh, so, uh, for my point of view, the training of teachers and the uh, selection of teachers is the main point. And their, uh, I think, uh, kaam karne ka jo unka tarika ya jis se unko trained kiya jaye, they must be trained uh, to work with full intention and full devotions. So I think, uh, Mr. Dutt, uh, I, I didn't quite understand the point on corruption. Maybe you can explain that. Uh, I don't know where the corruption comes in here. As much as power, uh, finance is related to power, man. For my point of view, um, maybe sure, I am sure. wrong. Sure, no, sure. No, no, as much as you put the financial level, the, no doubt facility will be increases, but majority of corruption comes with the power and finance. So, Mr. Dad, uh, I, that means... Despite, that of, means... The, uh, despite yeah. of the despite of the power, despite of the power, uh, cooperative development can, can be here. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Dutt, I think, uh, uh, I think we, the, we, we could have a very long discussion around this uh, because uh, the fact is, I'm sure Bharti Foundation has a much larger corpus uh, which funds uh, its activities than another NGO to say the larger a, corpus will lead to corruption is no, no ma'am. It is a cooperative aspect. It's about it systems. is a cooperative aspect. It's about systems and it's about it's about putting systems in place, which and it's about of course the people. And I think your point about teachers being at the heart, and I'm going to just spend a little time talking about that because all of you today, I uh, you know, are who have joined in this uh, webinar are basically teachers or principals and are, you know, are all educationists. I think what is really important to remember when we look at the NEP is the fact that it is the people, uh, you know, and especially the educationists and, and the leadership within, and I'm looking at teachers as being leaders as well, uh, who will actually make this happen or not happen. So I think the fact is, whether it is the educationist sitting in NCRT, 
uh, who are actually now devising a transformative national curriculum framework for school education, the NCFSC, or whether it is the diets uh, and the, you know, the bites which will actually train uh, teachers on the ground and master trainers, uh, whether it is the teachers in the classroom who will actually shape the future of our children and therefore the future of our nation. I think, and the leadership within each school and within the school complexes who will actually provide leadership for learning, le transformative leadership. I think each one of us, the administrators in the Ministry of Education, um, I think th there, there are the bureaucrats, um, the, the, the CDPOs and the, and the DEOs and you know the ZEOs, um, depending on which state we are talking about, I think all these people together make the fabric of the education system. And, and I think the NEP is great. I mean, as a document, it has a, as it has a wonderful vision uh, of providing equitable quality education. And, and it's also uh, piggybacking on the SDG4, which is, you know, which is about lifelong learning. And therefore, it is now saying that we shouldn't only be fo focusing on what is considered the hardcore curriculum, but it's about looking at creativity, it's about life skills, it's about looking at the right attitude for learning, because look at the pandemic, what has it showed us? Have you seen, just look around you. People, uh, I was um, looking, you know, reading a very interesting article on people who grow and sell flowers in Africa, in Zambia, for example. They, there are very poor people who are actually, Zambia is one of the largest exporters of flowers in the world. And I'm giving you this example just because they have wanted to be outside our country. And what is happening? They suddenly, all export of flowers came to an end during the pandemic. They all lost their livelihoods. So what did they do? They quickly changed what they were growing. They started growing the, so they started growing onions and potatoes in the same greenhouses. Uh, and I think the point is, are you able to problem solve? So what is the 21st century skill that we want to give our, our teachers who will then be able to create classrooms which will also be transformative and actually imbibe those 21st century skills of creativity, of you know, out-of-the-box thinking, of problem solving, of decision making, of resilience, of negotiation, of collaborative working. I think all those need to come by actually all of us working together, learning and truly living by these ideals and principles, uh, because that is when NEP 2020 will come alive. Um, I think there are huge policy uh, devices even today. Uh, for example, the foundational years are still uh, you know, one of you, I think in one of the slides said now, uh, foundational is only with Ministry of Education. That's not true. It's still with WCD as well. So uh, the question is, there are still those complex issues to be addressed. Yeah. So uh, who's running the Anganwadis? Who's actually, so you, the, the curriculum is being made for ECC, but how are Anganwadis? What are the, and I think most importantly, I think we also need to look at teacher working conditions going forward. I'm saying this because I've just written a piece for the Global Monitoring Report, which is next year, uh, the UNESCO Global Monitoring Report, which is going to be on teacher working conditions. And I did a review globally of looking at teacher working conditions and what is happening. What we are seeing is that there is increasing privatization and teachers who are supposed to be given the respect and supposed to be actually at the heart of the educational reform, often don't get uh, pays which are at power, par with you know minimum wages. Often you know you find that they are actually sidelined for, and we are talking of uh, continuous professional development. How many teachers in these small schools actually are able to you know get the kind of continuous professional development and progressive? You know, are they able to progress vertically and horizontally? I think those are big issues that we all have to really address going forward. Because I think there is, there is definitely, uh, we need to look at ethics and, and research coming together. And of course, I think as you all go forward, I think looking at NEP 2020 and all the gaps uh, of the earlier 
you know, documents. By the way, the, some of the earlier national policies, the plan of action was were also very good. The Kothari Commission report was an excellent piece, very progressive. It talks a lot that we have even repeated today. But I think the big question, and I think Mr. Srivastava, Dr. Srivastava talked about it this morning, you know, the socially, economically disadvantaged groups. I think the big challenge is how are we going to address these? How are we going to build capacities of the system to actually support teachers and communities and parents, particularly at a time when people are losing their livelihoods? Uh, I've just completed a research of head teachers, you know, in, in fact, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, both private and government, where 25% of the teachers only in the private sector were being paid during this pandemic because they don't have the funds. So government teachers, some of their, you know, money was not being paid at the moment, but they were definitely, it was just deferred. They will get their salaries. But private school teachers, a lot of head teachers said, our schools may close down. Huge challenge, which I haven't heard spoken about this morning, but there is a huge challenge going forward. We are going to have a lot of schools closing down because of the pandemic, because schools will not be able to sustain themselves. And I think that is where the onus will come back to the government schools. You'll find a lot of inflow into government schools. A lot of parents who cannot afford to pay for their children to go to private schools in rural areas and semi-urban areas will come back to the government system. And therefore, the government system has to definitely be ready to take up those new challenges of new children coming in, of reverse migration, which will happen. And you need to have enough teachers because the PTRs will change. I don't know how many of you are actually looking at these challenges and are going to to talk about it because this is really, really important. It's all very well to say we have a new document and a new educational policy. Let's look at the problems and challenges on the ground. And the pandemic has shown, thrown many more challenges than what the NEP authors actually had thought of because that was not the situation when they wrote the, the policy. So we have a really new situation which we need to address. And I know we all can, if we put our heads together, think out of the box and come up with solutions. So I'm going to end now because I could go on and on. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reno, for uh, this wonderful energetic session. I can see the, the fire with which you always speak. And it's always encouraging to hear you always whichever the forum that you moderate or uh, keynote speakers. So Dr. Renu Singh uh, has been, you know, along with the other speakers, has been putting across new education policy as the first session. Yes, policy is a mere document if that implementation is not done proper. And the teacher as a center of uh, everything has to be in place if they have to be the real change maker down there. So thank you very much, Dr. Renu Singh, for moderating the session. And thank you to Gautam, Jatin, and uh, Adapu for their presentations. As uh, as we have already uh, you know, started sending people for making a tree plantation in your name, we will be sending you as a token of appreciation to all of you uh, a certificate that is uh, telling you where the tree has been planted in your name. Thank you very much for the session. So this, with this, we would like to end the session one. We are uh, slightly delayed by 25, 20 minutes. Uh, so we are moving to the next section on early childhood care and development, which is the basis of education. For this, uh, I would like to uh, no, start with asking sorry to Dr. Pandey Abba Adams and the speakers for the delay in this uh, particular session. But I'm sure uh, always this particular type of discussions uh, on this, it's always a learning experience. So I'd like to warmly welcome all the speakers, moderators, and the uh, uh, keynote speaker of the session. Dr. Birendra Prasad Pandey, currently working as OSD with Director of Education, has a rich experience of 29 years encompassing various facets of education from student interaction, leadership, curriculum design, implementation of new pedagogy. His beard and emerged from esteemed Central Institute of Education, Delhi, and working with students of all ages from secondary to senior secondary, along with two year plus stint as undersecretary at National Council for Teacher Education, has paved the way for his deep understanding of nuances of ground reality and needs of students in order to achieve the holistic goals of education. 
He has been leading the pilot mentorship project of Delhi government, comprising of 200 mentors since its inception in 2016. He has played a pivotal role in framing and implementation of happiness and entrepreneurship curriculum, changing the face of government schools to newer pedagogy and now he is currently working in delivering the new normal in the field of education through webinars, online teaching, and is committed towards quality education. Thank you once again, sir, for coming over and uh, gracing this occasion. Over to you, sir. Sorry again for delaying. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you, Bharti Foundation, uh, uh, for invitation to speak something regarding ECC and. Uh, I uh, just uh, listen, uh, reinforcing also uh, regarding uh, the new challenges uh, which will be faced by the government system. Uh, the private school students will come to the government school due to this uh, pandemic situation. Yes, we are ready. The Delhi government is ready for that uh, to face the challenges. Uh, we, um, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Arma Adams, Madam, also here as a moderator. Just I am uh, going through uh, this session. Uh, it's a very interesting topic here: early child nature and versus nurture. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, need and awareness of ECCD, late light, sign, and uh, uh, mind also tools of the mind. Uh, this is all necessary for early child care and education. I think uh, uh, early child uh, care and education, uh, not merely for the preparation of primary school for the child, but uh, for also to prepare a, a future citizen and a human being. Uh, also, uh, UNICEF also uh, stress about the aim of the um, uh, for the development uh, for the education of early child care. That will be the social, emotional, cognitive, and physical needs uh, in order to build a solid and broad foundation of lifelong learning and well being uh, in the early child. That uh, requires for everywhere uh, now in the education system. And that is why NEP also stress uh, and focus uh, for a strong and uh, very uh, uh, the strong uh, ECC uh, uh, things. Uh, I think uh, uh, here uh, we should know uh, the what is the importance, or what should be the focus on ECC here. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, focus uh, uh, to uh, 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 during uh, zero to six years or zero to years, the body, mind, intellect of the child uh, challenges uh, changes rapidly. Even uh, if, uh, if some neuroscientists also uh, stress and find the. Uh, I have some uh, data here also the importance of early child in a child life. Uh, uh, Eighty-five percent of brain develops has already taken place by the uh, time of six years of the age. So it is very important uh, for any education system to introduce a strong and very uh, 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 for form in the formal education system also. Here uh, we should focus on the environment of the education to create environment education provision. Uh, that, is, should, that should be the interactive, age-appropriate, uh, enhanced self-development through varieties of exper experimental activities, provide opportunity to carry out meaningful activities in a play method. Even uh, Ava Madam, also a part of uh, uh, Curriculum Committee Education, uh, Delhi government has um, uh, going to create, a, a develop a new a curriculum uh, also uh, uh, from uh, on the basis of uh, their challenges and NEP also. So uh, our man also stress on uh, the same thing uh, uh, regarding the uh, uh, regarding the challenges uh, here, and uh, also uh, uh, we should uh, uh, the important aspects should uh, know the, the what should be the ECC. 
it's a, a it's a, a not only for the uh, uh, com I think it should create uh, the uh, child centric, not uh, general towards the uh, benchmark to of pass and fail. Uh, it should uh, process towards leading and learning, not the uh, 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 the product only. Uh, I think uh, our madam will stress more on this. I, uh, I definitely. Uh, say uh, the daily government uh, here and you have also Varki foundation also very vast experience because i think uh, daily government uh, associate with uh, with uh, 55 uh, schools from directorate of education and about 25 schools from primary schools so primary schools the Bharti foundation also have very vast experience regarding uh, in the primary schools uh, regarding the ECC important. So, uh, I think uh, uh, we have to think about this as well as we have to think about it as well as we have to strong and we have to think about the new education policy we have to think about it as well as we have to think about it as well as we have to think about it as well as we have to think about it as well as we have तो इसलिए इसको फिर से एक बार सोचने की जरूरत है जैसे अभी रेणु सिंह जी बोल रहे थे कि हमारे लिए कोठारी कमीशन को फिर से इसको बहुत सारी चीजों को लाया गया है इसमें कोई भी कैलकुलम में इस तरह का कोई भी कमी नहीं दिखी है सिर्फ कमी कहाँ दिख रही है हमारे अपने सोच में हमारे इंप्लीमेंटेशन पॉलिसी में तो इसलिए हमें इंप्लीमेंटेशन को देखना पड़ेगा हमारे सोच को बदलना पड़ेगा हमें किस तरह से और स्टेक होल्डर्स को इसमें जोड़ना पड़ेगा सभी को जोड़ना पड़ेगा पेरेंट्स की बात अभी कम्युनिटी की बात कर रहे थे पेरेंट्स को कैसे इस तरह से जोड़ना पड़ेगा एक विश्वास करना पड़ेगा उनके साथ और उनको कैसे जोड़ना पड़ेगा तो इसलिए हम मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये एक बहुत अच्छा प्लेटफॉर्म है जहां से कि हम ये सोच सकते हैं जहां से हम आगे बढ़ सकते हैं जहां से हमें एक और भी गवर्नमेंट के साथ ये बढ़कर ये सोचना पड़ेगा कि हमें कहा कमी रह गई थी इंप्लीमेंटेशन में और किस तरह से हम इस चीज को और आगे ला सकते हैं कोई भी एजुकेशन पॉलिसी रहा हो कोई भी करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क रहा हो कहीं भी इस तरह के वो कमी नहीं छोड़ा गया लेकिन उसमें सिर्फ कमी कहीं अगर दिख रही है तो वो इंप्लीमेंटेशन पार्ट में है और वो इंप्लीमेंटेशन पार्ट को स्ट्रॉन्ग बनाना पड़ेगा हमको ये देखना पड़ेगा कि कहा लैग कर रहे हैं कहा गैप है हमारे पास किस जगह हमें ये सोचना पड़ेगा कहा स्ट्रेस है क्या हम बहुत सेंट्रलाइज हो गए हैं क्या हमने स्कूल को ऑटोनोमी दिया है क्या हमने पेरेंट्स को उस तरह से स्वीकार किया है अपने स्कूल में क्या हमने बच्चों को उस तरह से वेलकम किया है क्या हम बच्चों को स्पेस दिए हैं क्या बच्चों को इन्वायरमेंट क्रिएट किए हैं ये हमें सोचना पड़ेगा क्या हमें एक अथॉरिटी को एक मॉनिटरिंग के रूप में जाना है जान, वहां जाना पड़ेगा या एक इंस्पेक्शन के रूप में जा रहे हैं या वो क्या सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं हमें हमारा एक एक्सपीरियंस रहा है हमारा एक्चुअली हम जब एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन में एजुकेशन से है डिपार्टमेंट से है तो ये एक माइंड सेट है कि हम अगर जाएं तो हम उसको सपोर्ट ना करें हम उसके लिए कोई सजेशन ना दें बल्कि एक फॉल्ट फाइंडर्स के रूप में जाते हैं कि ये कमी है ये कमी है ये कमी है उस चीज उस सिचुएशन को हम नहीं जान पा रहे हैं उस स्कूल के इन्वायरमेंट को नहीं उस स्कूल के सर्कमस्टांसिस को नहीं जान रहे हैं वहां की जो प्रॉब्लम है उसको नहीं जान रहे हैं और हम सिर्फ एक माइंडसेट से जा रहे हैं कि हम इंस्पेक्शन करेंगे हमारे साथ ये है चाहे वो कुछ भी बोले हमें इसको बदलना पड़ेगा हमें इसको बिल्कुल बदलना पड़ेगा और एजुकेशन का ये मतलब नहीं है कि आप सिर्फ एक इंस्पेक्शन करके एक डायरेक्शन देकर आप उनको छोड़ दिए हैं हमें अगर स्कूल को करना है तो हमें एक कनेक्ट लाना पड़ेगा अलाइन करना पड़ेगा हमारी पॉलिसी के साथ हमारे स्कूल हमारे क्लासरूम और सारे स्टेक होल्डर के साथ उसको एक अलाइन करना पड़ेगा आ, मुझे आ, अच्छा लगेगा कि ये प्लेटफॉर्म एक ऐसा है जहां से निकल कर आए हमने ये देखा पूरी 
इसमें बहुत एजुकेशनिस्ट हैं बहुत स्कॉलर इसमें बैठे हुए हैं बहुत सारे ऐसे एनजीओ पार्टनर हैं जो कि इस चीज इस फील्ड में काम कर रहे हैं और उनके अपने एक वास्ट एक्सपीरियंस है हम हम तो आप और एक हमारे लिए और अच्छा है अपॉर्चुनिटी है कि हमारी जो करिकुलम कमिटी की जो मेंबर्स हैं आज की मॉनिटर हमारे आभा मैडम यहाँ बैठी हैं क्योंकि हम लोग अब एक एक बेसिक फाउंडेशनल से हम लोग स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं एक रिफॉर्म्स की हम लोग ये चाह रहे हैं कि क्या बच्चे को मिलना चाहिए कैसे सोच सकते हैं बच्चे तक कैसे पहुंचे बच्चे सेंट्रिक कैसे हों चाइल्ड सेंट्रिक कैसे हों क्या हमें बदलाव लाना पड़ेगा एक जो ट्रेडिशनल मेथड है ट्रेनिंग का उसको रखना पड़ेगा या हमको उसमें भी चेंज करना पड़ेगा अगर हम एसेसमेंट की बात करें कोई भी कोई भी पॉलिसी या कोई भी पैडोलॉजी या कोई भी जो पॉलिसी है वो या सिलेबस या करिकुलम की बात करें हम वो लास्टली डिपेंड करता है कि आप उसको एसेस कैसे करते हैं जिस रूम से एसेस जिस तरह से एसेसमेंट होगा उसी तरह से क्लासरूम ट्रांजेक्शन होगा तो इसलिए हमें एसेसमेंट पर भी हमें बहुत ज्यादा जोर देना पड़ेगा कि क्या हम अर्ली चाइल्ड में बच्चों को किस रूप में एसेस कर रहे हैं किस रूप में देख रहे हैं कि कैसे उसको डेवलप करना है तो मेरा आज के इसमें यही है कि हम लोग इस चीज पर बात करें कि कैसे हम चेंज कर सकते हैं कोई भी पॉलिसी ऐसी नहीं है जिसमें कि इस चीज पर स्ट्रेस नहीं दिया गया है कि इसको हमको हॉलिस्टिक डेवलपमेंट हो या चाइल्ड सेंट्रिक हो उसको प्ले वे मेथड करें चाइल्ड में लेकिन फिर भी कहीं ना कहीं कमी रह गई है हमारे कहीं ना कहीं लैग कर रहे हैं तो उसको आज के रूप में हमें ये देखना पड़ेगा कि कहा वो लैग है कहा वो गैप है क्या इंप्लीमेंटेशन में है क्या एसेसमेंट में है क्या ट्रेनिंग में है या माइंडसेट में है या इसका कनेक्ट में है अलाइनमेंट में है वेरियस स्टेक होल्डर का तो मेरा आज का यही है और सभी का और हमको भी बहुत ही अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि मैं आज थोड़ा बिजी था मैं ज्यादा देर तक रुक नहीं पाऊंगा हार्डली मैं पीछे मैं रेणु सिंह जी के और कुछ पैनलिस्ट को मैंने सुन रहा था जो स्कॉलर अपने प्रेजेंट कर रहे थे आज मैं चाहूंगा आवा मैडम चूंकि ये मॉडरेट कर रहे हैं और ये जो टॉपिक है ये रियली वंडरफुल टॉपिक जो मॉडरेट कर रही है तो इसके लिए जो डेली गवर्नमेंट करिकुलम पर अपना काम कर रही है उसके लिए भी हमें बहुत कुछ ऐसे क्लू मिलेगा और ये जो भी आपसे भारतीय फाउंडेशन से मैं ये रिक्वेस्ट भी करूंगा कि वो कुछ ना कुछ हमारे साथ शेयर करें जो आपके आज के हैं तो वो हमारे लिए शायद कैरिकुलम में और एक मार्गदर्शक बन सके हम लोग कुछ नए ढंग से इंप्लीमेंट करें क्योंकि दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट आप जान रहे हैं कि एक डिफरेंट वे से वर्क कर रही है हम लोगों ने पैडोलॉजी पर भी काम किया है ट्रेनिंग पर भी काम किया है हम लोगों ने कम्युनिटी को बहुत क्लोज करने की कोशिश की है कम्युनिटी को ऑनरशिप देने की कोशिश की है हम लोग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर भी काम कर रहे हैं ताकि बच्चे को एक एनवायरमेंट मिल सके स्पेस मिल सके हम लोग कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि क्लासरूम जो टीचर स्टूडेंट रेशियो हो वो प्रॉपर हो बहुत सारी चीजों पर हम लोग वर्क कर रहे हैं और ये हमारा पैडोलॉजी हम लोग जो कैरिकुलम है और हम एक अलग से बोर्ड भी बना रहे हैं हमारे लिए कि हम ये ना कि हमें अगर हम कैरिकुलम बनाए तो हमको उस पर कहीं ना कहीं रोक लगे हम बोर्ड भी बना रहे हैं कि ये बोर्ड हम फ्री है इसको इंप्लीमेंट करने के लिए तो आज इस सेशन में हम भारतीय फाउंडेशन से हम रिक्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं कि जो भी आपके आउटकम है जो भी सजेशन है अगर वो हम लोगों को दे सकते हैं हम लोगों को कर सकते हैं तो वो शायद हम उसको इनकॉर्पोरेट कर सकें अपने स्कूल लेवल पर अपने करिकुलम में अपने बोर्ड में इस चीज पर डिस्कस कर सकें अपने असेसमेंट टूल में ला सकें इंप्लीमेंटेशन में ला सकें थैंक यू अगेन थैंक यू सभी को थैंक यू वेरी मच अगेन भारती फाउंडेशन फॉर इन्विटेशन ऑल द बेस्ट और लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड कि हम लोग जुड़े रहें इसी तरह से वर्क करें थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सर फॉर योर वर्ड्स फॉर दी ओपनिंग रिमार्क्स ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन वाइल आई वेलकम समरा खान दखरू समरा खान फ्रॉम जामिया मिल्ला यूनिवर्सिटी दखरू बरे टीचर फ्रॉम हेडलिस कॉर्नर स्कूल रिम्बाई मेघालय सोनू खलरा टीचर सत्य भारती आदर सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्कूल चौगावा पंजाब सुगन्या भारद्वाज टीचर फ्रॉम अपरदानी हाई स्कूल कामरूप असम इट्स अ वेरी वाइड स्पीकर्स वी आर फ्रॉम प्रैक्टिकली यू नो डिफरेंट स्टेट्स दैट वी हैव सो आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस ऑफ कोर्स अबा मैडम डजेंट नीड अ स्पेशल इंट्रोडक्शन बट 
I would like to, for the benefit of those, all the people who are here, Abba Adams has created an enviable reputation as an innovation, innovative education. A prolific writer on education and an accomplished orator, she has spent over 35 years in education, media, arts management, both in India and the UK. An alumna of Lady Sri Ram College, she taught undergraduate and postgraduate students at her alma mater and completed a second master's in theater arts at the University of Leeds, UK. As former director of the Sri Ram Schools and advisor education to step-by-step -step school Noida, she has been instrumental in founding and developing two major educational institutions in the country. <coughs> Sorry, she conceptualized and led the Center for Learning and Teaching, which focused on teacher capacity building, mentoring, and coaching. Presently, she is leading educational consultant, advising several national and international educational training and development organizations. She serves on several boards, is vice chair of the Ahavan Trust, working closely with curriculum development and the professional development of teachers in government schools. Thank you, Dr. Abba Adams for uh, uh, gracing this occasion as a moderator and for agreeing to be there. Over to you, Abba Adams. Thank you so much, Anthony. Just um, checking as Dr. Renu did, how much time do we have? Are you going to ring bells? And, yes, we, uh, we are ringing bells. I think it is uh, not audible to the speaker. So this time we will try to send a message and also we will say one minute more orally so that they are able to hear. Maybe the bell that we are ringing not able to hear. So okay. we have, uh, as mentioned earlier, we will have about five to six minutes for the, all the speakers. Then we can questions uh, addressed to them can be done at the end of it, maybe for about 10 minutes. We have, uh, ideally speaking, we have 45 minutes, but since we have started some late, we can go by another 10 minutes. Okay. Over to you. About. Thank you. We will try and keep it as uh, crisp as possible. Thank you, Bharti Foundation, Anthony and Mantaji for this extremely enriching morning. I have learned a great deal. And um, just to pull together whatever is uppermost in my mind, the importance of primary research that was mentioned by um, Kadamuti at the very outset. The fact that this research needs to reach the teacher most critically, and sometimes research just stays in teacher education institutes. The fact that teachers should be engaged in active action research is something that is missing from our systems. And um, what I felt so moved by was the fact that uh, Dr. Renu Singh highlighted the, um, how the role of the teacher has been undermined. And, you know, as teachers, we are not given the respect. First and last, I see myself as an educator and nothing makes me happier than being in the company of other educators. So I'm really happy to see everybody today. Sabko bahut bahut namaskar. Thank you for your hard work. I am not going to make any more opening remarks, but I think let's hear from you because you are the real architects. So if we can start with um, Sukhanya, Sukhanya Bhardwaj, who has been introduced already. Um, Sukhanya ji, over to you. And um, let's hear you. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. I feel so privileged to be introduced by you here. Uh, good afternoon to all the members that are present here, the panelists, organizers, and also my fellow speakers. Uh, to introduce myself, I'm Sukanya Bharadwaj from Guwahati, Assam. I have been into the teaching profession for the last 14 years now, and also have been freelancing in the print and electronic media, and I take pride in shaping young minds. And I'm really honored to be part of this enriching interaction. And I'm grateful particularly to Bharati Foundation for giving me this opportunity uh, to present my paper on early childhood education and care at CONVOX 2020. Can I have the next slide, please? I have taken into the purview of my research the concern whether the child's nature alone contributes to his development during early childhood or does external conditioning like care and nurture also have a role to play? Early childhood care and education in the Indian context refers to attention provided to a child in the first six years of his life. At this stage, a child can be compared to a sibling 
as he deserves the same kind of tender care and nourishment as a gardener gives a seedling in the formative period of its growth. Apart from achieving appropriate milestones, we all need to be concerned about how the normal human traits are fostered in our children and allow them a free and natural environment to grow. During this period, whatever the child sees, hears and learns leaves a huge influence on his psyche. It determines the trajectory for his lifelong learning and well-being. Caregivers can give the maximum support and stimulation towards inculcating healthy habits, attitudes, and traits of behavior. We must acknowledge the fact that children are actually sovereign beings born with their own choices. So we should consciously respect their individuality, imposing our own unfulfilled desires on the child and making him or her do things he or she may not like, may have an adverse effect on their psyche. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, during my research, here are some of the questions that I had posed, like how does nature and nurture influence early childhood development? What parents need to know while fostering their child? How does mother tongue help a child's linguistic growth? How is play important in child's learning? How can we activate child's own natural desire to learn? And does teacher-parent coordination help the child's progress? Next slide, please. Here's an attempt at discussing the concerns of early childhood care with respect to child's holistic development. Uh, in the wake of the pandemic outbreak, however, where primary schools haven't opened yet, for most of this paper, I had to depend on available sources like government publications, UNICEF reports, and contents from the internet. With the real-time research dynamics like person-to-person -person contact were amiss, the research had to be mostly conducted through questionnaires, case studies, observations, and video interviews with the focus group. Next slide, please. So here are the findings. Uh, the first six years of a child's life is extremely crucial as it is marked by rapid growth and development. In fact, it is said that 90% of the brain develops during this period. So to say, every aspect of development of the child happens here, including his physical, cognitive, social, emotional, psychomotor, as well as linguistic skills develop. Both nature and nurture play a vital role in the child's growth at this stage. One without the other actually destabilizes the equation of child's holistic growth. Just like different fruits, we call it cherry, peach, and plum. They all have different points, they, they, they ripe at different points of the year. So also every child has his or her own pace of development. So it would not be right to expect the same result of every child. This again involves a lot of patience on the part of caregivers to be aware that each one of them is distinctly different from the other in interest, temperament, etc. Next slide, please. In order to foster both receptive and expressive communication of the child, the use of mother tongue is inevitable. Association with peers through group activities in school, asking children to describe their experiences, etc., are some of the ways to motivate them to express their mother in their mother tongue. Learning their local songs, poems, etc., also helps them. Most of the things children need to learn during their early childhood years can be discovered through play. Play not only sensitizes the child about his environment, but helps him discover his qualities, his own strengths and weaknesses, and inculcates the values of leadership, cooperation, and coping with defeat, etc. Stimulating and manifesting the child's natural curiosity makes him a ready learner. Storytelling is a wonderful way to conjure a world of imagination and curiosity in the mind of the child. Five minutes. To ensure a smooth transition from home to school learning, strong parent-teacher coordination becomes a necessity. Next slide, please. The research broadly was re had revealed these things. In our children, we sow the seeds of hope. 
both nature and nurture are indispensable factors in child's growth. Keeping their individual differences in mind and through proper parent-teacher coordination, experiences can be given to the child through a variety of activities, especially those that arouse their curiosity and imagination. This may include play, music, painting, storytelling, role play, etc., to name a few. One minute Next to slide. conclude. Next slide, please. Every aspect of the child at this stage needs special and undivided attention as it targets at achieving his all-round development. Both nature and nurture are determinants of the child growth and development. Their inquisitiveness must be encouraged and should not be distanced from reality. Thanks to NEP 2020 that policymakers have come up with a lot of emphasis on ECC in the days to come. So we should create opportunities for them to delve into their own world of imagination. Finally, I conclude by saying that giving each child the best start is an assurance of a better future. And in my next slide, you will find the bibliography to my presentation. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you very much, Sakanya. That was very rich and covered a great deal. Uh, but the question is, uh, is, it, is the question still open? That is it nature or nurture, or are you saying it is a combination of both? Yes, uh, ma'am, I would like to answer your question here. Uh, though initially I started with the question, uh, which of these are influential in the child's growth process, whether it is only nature or it's only nurture that really you know, uh, determines the child's growth in the early childhood stage. But towards the end of my research, I really concluded that both of the things, both nature and nurture, are equally important. Okay, thank you so much. Thank so, you. Moving on to our next speaker, and I love the um, um, uh, title. Um, sorry, that was the Let the Light Shine. But we're first going to have Need and Awareness of ECCD by Sonu Kalra, who is teaching at the at the other senior secondary school in Chogawan in Punjab. Welcome, Sonu. Let's hear your thoughts. Jahin, ma'am. Jahin to all the delegates and dignitaries present here. My name is Sonu Kalra, and I'm working as computer teacher at Satya Bharti other senior secondary school, Chogawa. Today, I'm here to present my research paper on early childhood care and development, need and awareness of this basis of education. Let's start with the basic introduction. Next slide, please. This is going to be about parents' role in early childhood care and development. As for parents, having kids is the biggest blessing. That's why concerns around children's education, future, and development starts popping up in their minds since the birth of their kid. Many people know that the first six years of human life are critical as the rate of development in these years is faster than at any other stage of development. And early childhood care and development is more than a mere preparation for primary school. Early childhood is an important time in children's lives because it is when they first learn how to interact with others and develop interest that will stay with them throughout their lives. That's why it is crucial to observe those first few years. There are certain milestones to keep a track of a child's growth and development that are already installed in the research paper. I request for the next slide, please. During my research, I have framed a questionnaire survey that was shared with the mothers residing in Chagawan village. Their responses to the questions helped me to understand the current scenario of the childhood development in their area. Next slide, please. I used Google form survey method to gather the responses for my research work. Along with this, I also had a small part of discussion with parents who have toddlers at their homes. Next slide. During uh, my research work, I had the uh, methodology of using the survey. I also observed few milestones that uh, we observe during the growth and development of a child. 
for example in uh, the starting phase from 0 to 3 uh, months a child or an infant starts uh, smiling try to recognize parents start uh, giving facial expressions observe movements and always starts of babbling that is the first stage we start observing the child's growth their mind growth and the brain after that we are also having the next milestone from 7 to 10 months that also gives us a idea how the child will start responding like he starts saying yes no just starts uh, moving his head nods and it is also a way to observe the child development we start talking with the child and here the milestone begins also while studying other research papers and studies i have jotted other milestones like when the child is of 1 year he or she starts speaking simple words like mama papa dada and can also find lost things easily continuously stays busy in doing simple things and becomes active and absorbs himself thoroughly he is busy in his own doings he is always uh, moving ahead and finding something to do next slide please similarly when he reaches to this age a group of 3 years the child shows concern with others and starts self dressing and undressing starts speaking clearly and this is the uh, time in nowadays like the uh, parents have put the child in the preschooling and in that way the teachers also start observing the child whether he is able to move run climb understand the instructions or not next slide please i would like to share the findings of the survey there are 45% of parents particularly mothers who do not provide home schooling to kids they are not aware of uh, uh, home schooling they simply try to teach the basic necessities of life to the kids but all the 72 participants have shown interest in teaching care and hygiene to kids like wash your hands after eating before eating another important point is that in today's busy world parents are too much busy that they do not spend enough time with their kids for their holistic development in my research i found 72% people not spending enough time with toddlers to engross their motor skills either the gross or the fine motor skills they are not aware of this after this i also had a uh, questions regarding the concepts that they teach to the kids during the preschool to which i found while all the parents were involved in some kind of home schooling directly or indirectly mostly uh, in my research it is 49 parents taught their kids about alphabets and numbers while remaining 23 uh, parents also taught poems as well which is the very good number as they are trying to motivate the uh, kids to uh, be better in the academics and learn the basics next slide please i feel content to share analysis of my research that 68% means 49 parents are using physical objects to teach the kids the necessary skills this helps the toddlers to develop their gross and fine motor skills for in the growing age as we have already mentioned the early few years are the deep observational uh, years and parents try to do this with their toddlers next slide please well to conclude my research paper i would uh, state that ecce is essential for preparing children for their schooling helping toddlers behave properly building the foundation of their future education undoubtedly there are few challenges and limitations to how parents have been approaching this like lack of knowledge parents are not aware of the ecce focus on only academics they are only preparing the kid for the competition in the world and trying to put the kids in the preschooling or uh, schooling starting and they want their uh, kids uh, to be the one of the best students of the school so that's why they only focus on alphabets numbers poems to teach the kids and but also there is a, a biggest challenge that they are not having enough time to focus on the other skills that are also important in the child's growth and development time to conclude next, yes ma'am next slide please to enable parents they live a better preschooling learnings i would suggest few recommendations like proper guidance for the parents focus on academics plus extracurricular development inculcating and 
engaging activities in delicious tool time management sessions or workshops for parents that's all from my research paper in the end i would like to express my thankfulness to other researchers whose papers helped me to complete my research and prepare a report with the useful data in addition to the research i conducted through the survey i am very thankful to the bharti foundation to giving me this uh, platform to share my research paper and uh, also the all the participants and my co uh, uh, participants who have shared their paper thank you very much So no, thank you so much for sharing your research findings, and extremely, and they were extremely interesting as well. The focus on parent engagement with teachers with their children is so critical, particularly during the last nine months of this pandemic, when teachers have not been able to access, and various governments have looked at ways and means of reaching children. But how we all know there is a digital divide, and you cannot continue to. Uh, depend on that and um i think that one of the things that uh, has to be considered really really seriously and quickly is the need to reach parents through television the terrestrial mode of tv most families have a tv many families will not have a smartphone and we know the figures with regard to that and one can't begin to imagine what kind of learning loss has happened but the points that you make are extremely interesting on developmental milestones um i just like to share something that you know sure ma'am nobody prepares you to be a parent okay yes. you just become a parent and then you do the best that you can um by falling back on your experience of how you have been parented and your suggestion of uh, parent webinars again i would say that the television is such a great medium to be able to reach parents in rural areas and it's all very basic the more you talk to your child you know our grandmothers knew that it is not new age parenting the more you talk ab jitna baat karenge bachche ke sath uski goli utni tez wo pakad lega and uh, the more you Keep them with you. उनके आप रोटी पका रहे हो उनको साथ रखिए उनको बेलना दीजिए उनसे आटा गुंदवाइए यू डोंट नीड प्ले डो यू डोंट नीड प्री स्कूल एक्टिविटीज बट दीज आर ऑल वेरी प्रैक्टिकल थिंग्स नाउ अनफॉर्चुनेटली पेरेंट्स राइट दे हैड दिस लिटल टाइम एंड पर्टिकुलरली इन अर्बन एरियाज यहाँ तो मोबाइल फोन उनको पकड़ा देती है छह महीने का बच्चा है उसके पास मोबाइल फोन है एंड द चाइल्ड इज just freaking through various things so it is something this parental engagement in early childhood is the most important part that we have to address and this is something uh, dr pandey had spoken about earlier the what we are attempting to do in delhi and parental engagement and building parental understanding of how best uh, we can support their child in these extremely critical early years both the speakers have talked about the fact that between 0 to 8 or 0 to 9 brain develops 80% 90% whenever we learn but but your brain kaise develop karta hai in the sense that whenever we learn something new our neurons are fired now neuroscience tells us and synapses are formed pathways are formed they are called neural networks jitne bacche ko stimulation milegi baat se उनकी बात सुनने में और उनसे बात करने में जितने बच्चे को लैंग्वेज विल बी यू नो यू सराउंड द चाइल्ड विद लैंग्वेज जितनी स्टिम्युलेशन एंड यू डोंट नीड टॉयज जो भी घर में है उनके साथ खेलिए द एनजीओ प्रथम हैज सेंट सम लवली वीडियोस आर ओन ट्रस्ट इट्स कॉल्ड वी हैव अट ऑन फेसबुक पेज उसमें लॉकडाउन की पाठशाला वो वेरी सिंपल तीन मिनट के वीडियो के पेरेंट्स क्या क्या कर सकते हैं बच्चों के साथ सो आई थिंक दिस इज अ वेरी मीनिंगफुल रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट दैट यू डिड सो नो सो थैंक यू वेरी वेरी मच मूविंग ऑन वेरी क्विकली टू अम द टाइटल दैट आई लव्ड व्हिच वाज लेट द लाइट शाइन एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी प्रेजेंटेड बाय दकारु बारे हु इज अ टीचर ऑफ हिडालिस कॉर्नर स्कूल इन मेघालय 
Um, Dakaru, I hope I have pronounced your name right. Yes, and, correct. Oh, okay. Then uh, welcome and over right. to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, greetings and uh, to Bharti Foundation and uh, to you, ma'am, and my co presenters. Thank you, the Bharti Foundation, for giving us this uh, opportunity. And um, <clears throat> to start with, I've given the title Let the Light Shine under the sub theme Early Childhood uh, is the basis of early childhood care is the basis of, uh, of uh, education. Now, to start with, early childhood, it refers to that stage or period of time where there is a uh, biological and psychological changes and this ranges of time period from uh, from concepts until the age of six now this stage we can say is the most important next slide please uh, stage uh, most important <clears throat> uh, stage uh, it is the most critical stage because it is the period in life when brain develops uh, rapidly and then it was said that more than 80 percent of the uh, brain develops at this stage and uh, the foundation for health and well-being throughout life is laid at this uh, stage. Uh, uh, we can um, uh, see for even the World Health Organization, the WHO, has uh, is also given the this uh, early childhood care and development as one of their priorities of work, uh, because they too believe that early childhood is a window of opportunity to improve health and equity. Now, if we look at the statistics of India for this early childhood children. Uh, early uh, years children, according to the 2011 census, there is an aggregate of 158 millions of children, out of which uh, 117 millions are uh, children in the uh, rural areas and 41 millions are in the urban areas. And we can be sure that development uh, in the urban areas are uh, however met but uh, in the in in the rural areas where children where more children are there and they are belonging to poor backgrounds and how far the development is reached we are not sure so the government of, of india uh, next slide please so the government of India on uh, 2nd October 1977 has implemented this uh, integrated uh, child developmental scheme uh, on 2nd October and this scheme provides uh, preschool education uh, primary health center, immunization, health checkup, and all those uh, services, uh, referral health services to children under age of six and also their, their mothers. And all over India, especially the rural areas, are utilizing this uh, this scheme. And even here in my state, Meghalaya too, we, I can assure you that the health centers in rural places uh, especially are effectively using the scheme through the immense work of the uh, Aganwadis and the Ashas. And going to the next part, early childhood, uh, early childhood de uh, development matters. The reason number one is uh, those children, if children does not receive or does not develop properly, they tend to acquire lower IQs and IQs, uh, low IQs children, they do not behave normally and they even, uh, they do not even do well in academic performances. Secondly, and children also tend to have poor health if they do not get uh, proper treatment. And thirdly, if children, if children do not receive uh, proper care for development and they become underdeveloped, and underdevelopment will lead to troubled socialization with, among their peers and even uh, the people in the society. And fourthly, children with underdeveloped brains, they tend to, uh, it, it tends to affect their ability to live free and fulfilling lives. Next slide, please. Going to the next part, uh, uh, the role of education in, uh, in early childhood. Uh, education play a very important role towards development of early childhood. And as we've heard uh, from one of our co-presenters, he mentions that uh, as per the NEP 2020, uh, the, uh, this early childhood development care uh, is also included in, uh, in the formal education. So the ad uh, educational administrators should set the curriculum, which is child-centered and activity-centered, and which of course is the duty of the state level education administrators to prescribe syllabus and to look into that matter. And also there is a need to include children uh, with special needs in school so that they have they also receive equal opportunities. Uh, so the context of inclusion was also included in almost every school. Unlike during the time, uh, uh, the, the time of the very famous scientist, as I've included in my slide, um, where he was excluded from school during his time on account of language disability, when he actually had dyslexia right from a very early age. Unfortunately, his parents saw the potentiality in Einstein. They shift him to a different type of a school that accepts him, and he became what he is until he became a scientist because of his parents who saw the willpower and determination of uh, Einstein uh, and 
till he became a scientist. And now talking about edu uh, educational technology, educational technology is also the information and communication technologies, the ICTs, which transmit dig digital information through e-learning, or we can say electronic learning and m-learning or mobile learning and blended learning. And blending is a combination of online as well as offline, and which is also very common, especially here in rural areas. We had to ask parents of the ch child to come and then collect some uh, assignments for them, uh, and especially amidst this uh, current current pandemic of the COVID-19. And now next part is the role of the parents in early childhood. And parents, we can say, are the first teacher to the child as stated. Even if uh, children has to go to school and spend more time in schools, but the little time that the children spend with the parents will, will affect them and influence them for the whole life. And sometimes uh, teachers do not see the genius in the child. Only the parents can, uh, just like I'm saying. So parent involvement is very important for the early childhood development process. Next slide, please. And now uh, the theme of uh, this theme of early childhood care and development is one of great uh, significance and is the most delicate stage and needs utmost care uh, for these children. As teachers, we must learn to get insights about these children and also to get parents' involvement and cooperation while learning about the child. Next slide, please. And the methods I used uh, in this paper is based on primary data where I conducted through interviews through questionnaires as shown in this slide and as well as secondary data uh, collected from books and journals and so on. Next slide, please. One minute to conclude. And uh, from my findings, I found that uh, there's a difference of characteristics, behavioral patterns, and I've done with even with two years uh, set of retinal twins. And of course, as age increases, they become more self-dependent. And uh, this kid spends more time with the parents, so parents need to be more supportive, especially at this time of pandemic. Uh, and my implication is that early intervention is a must for this children's developmental process and also for the education. And if we give the right kind of information or teaching to them, this uh, children can be uh, better equipped to live and serve the society as children are the future of tomorrow. And to conclude, uh, to, for this little uh, next slide, please. Uh, for this little light to shine, uh, we can say education, parents, family, uh, so on, play great roles. And to add, uh, and to, add to my uh, statement, which I can also say is a suggestion, I feel that the need of the R in today's context is to sensitize sex and discrimination right from early childhood so as to instill our sons and daughters uh, with the knowledge that boys and girls share an equal platform in all spheres of life and to respect each other. And this will go a long way in bringing about a sense of securing and a safe environment for the future generation. So, so we must uh, catch them young. And as uh, there's a quote there I've written, uh, I mean, I've uh, mentioned by Ravi Cochran, uh, who's a singer and child honoring, who says that when we pay attention to the beginning of a story, we can change the whole story. Next slide, please. Here is a list of my bibliography, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dakaru. That was uh, very enlightening indeed. I'm so glad I've been making quick notes that you spoke at length about adversity that children face um, when they are coming into schools in many situations and the struggles particularly that differently abled children face. Our schools sadly are still not inclusive. And I know that in Delhi, we are struggling with this, but uh, we are hoping that we will make um, the right efforts and the right changes to make our schools more inclusive. And um, made some critical points about the need for gender sensitivity to be introduced at an early stage so that children know, our boys know particularly, that they have to respect um, girls and their, uh, and mothers need to know that a daughter or a son, they are both equal in the universe's eyes and God's eyes, whatever you would like to call it. So thank you for making those very, very valid points. Move uh, to our last speaker today, another excellent title called Tools of the Mind, uh, Developmental Mindstone, and it's been presented by Samra Khan, research scholar, Jamia Millia Islamia University in Delhi. Welcome, Samra. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Abha, ma'am. I am a research scholar from Jamia Millia Islamia, but uh, on the, uh, at the same time, I'm working as a teacher in the School of Excellence also, Madanpur Khadar, with Delhi Government. 
so it is a privilege that i am working with uh, such uh, people who are working in the field of education with so much enthusiasm and i have seen the changes from 2011 till date next slide please next slide please i have been working i started working in 2016 where there was no concept of nep 2020 the nep has come now and i have been working with a lead years of learning since 2011 and in 2016 i got enrolled for my phd and started working on the bigotian approach to early learning bigotian has given four concepts four main important concepts that there is a zone of proximal development from which there is a range between the not a, not doable task and the doable task and the mediator is the teacher who can take the child from the not doable task to the doable task with scaffolding and after scaffolding the teacher or the more knowledgeable peer group may be the friend classmates parents sibling elder sibling mother father anyone anyone can be the more knowledgeable other which can lead to the development of the child in the cognitive aspect behavioral aspect and the other social cultural learning aspects also and the one of one most important thing is the private speech which a child develop by his own next slide please <coughs> these are the things that bigotian concepts have been given so can we go to the research questions please mm. Yes, my research questions was there were four questions in my mind when when I started working. Do the teachers which are teaching in the ECT years are actually knowing the psychological and developmental aspects of the needs of the children, and the curriculum which they are teaching is appropriate in the age and the development aspect? And do the teachers know the important social cultural context of the child development? And after that, I integrated the Vygotskyan approach, and I had to assess whether the Vygotskyan approach is effective in learning or not. Next slide, please. I I had to work. I had I had so much interest in early years of learning that I went I went for a pilot survey. I selected then I selected the schools. Then I interviewed the heads of the schools, then the teachers, observation of transactional strategies, assessment of learning outcomes. i interviewed the parents also i developed lesson plans i attended seminars workshops and then i went for the integration of my my lesson plans in the actual classroom and then assess the learning after the integration of the wideartian perspective based lesson plan next slide please in the in the while starting my study i found that only 75% of children in the early years of learning are enrolled in pre school education either in the government setup or in the private setup and some uh, nearly 10% of them are uh, uh, attending ecb only the icbs only is that that are the anganwadi sent next slide please i selected the following school with the seven schools one was within the university two state government schools one anganwadi center and the privately run school with ecb center uh there was a, a, a senior secondary school with early childhood classroom and also a play school in dcp next slide please i worked on around 250 children with 25 teachers and around 50 families and i collected data from those only next slide please the question that was asked was um, about the views of the heads of the heads of the school the teachers the transactional strategies I studied the curriculum of all the seven setups. I had a checklist to get the knowledge of the infrastructural facilities and the resources that are available for the children, and then I integrated my my knowledge with the lesson plan, and then uh, we uh, had the finding. Next slide, please. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, Samra. Can you bring your mic closer? Your volume is very low. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Yes, uh, ma'am. Next slide, please. Next one with the figures. Yes. The when what I found was the uh, teachers are uh, uh, some of the teachers are untrained. Uh, for example, the teachers from the ICDS centers, Anganwadi centers, are not at all trained for teaching the young kids. 
some other teachers who have done uh, uh, private entity just after class 12 so one year entity and they have become teachers in ecc they don't have any professional uh, uh, i can say like uh, they have not uh, qualified any eligibility test for teaching the young kids and still they are doing the teaching work some other uh, trained ba teachers who are not experts in ecc and still they are teaching the young kids some have done uh, a distance learning course from igmu or some other university and still they are doing the teaching learning thing in the school next slide please uh, uh the ratio of a teacher and child is very disturbing in our school setup some of the schools also had 40 section 40 class 40 children per section and two sections combined and attended by one teacher only so it is uh, uh, practically not possible for one person to attend 80 children of the age group 3 to 4 years or 3 to 5 years at the same time because if we start an activity for uh, 80 children it will take 80 minutes if we give 1 minute to every child it will take 80 minutes or if we combine them in groups so it will not be possible for a teacher to come uh, to focus on two or three or four groups at the same time and the, some of the schools have uh, no curriculum at all but like anganwadi centers they don't follow any curriculum the delhi government schools although have uh, the ahwan curriculum for the past 3 or 4 years and but still it is not a, uh, it is a uniform curriculum from the entire delhi and it uh, since i am teaching in a jj colony and some people are from defense colony also so it is possible for the people of defense colony to uh, to implement that curriculum effectively because from there the children are coming from very uh, a good social background and economic conditions but in jj colonies like madanpur khadar or it would be pantnagar or nangloi it is not possible practically uh, because i am a teacher i know the conditions of the school and some conclude, of the, uh, next slide please Uh, these are the na- uh, native languages of the children they have different social background and english is nowhere uh, the family language of any of the children in the schools next slide please the components of the curriculum include english hindi and mathematics it is that is the main focus they have no space for indoor activities but there are no such uh, outdoor activities only 5 5 to 6% are doing the outdoor activities main focus is on development of writing skills formation of letters formation of numbers they are not teaching how to count but they are teaching what to write a uh, number 2 like this number 3 like this but if you put three things before a child a child will not be able to do uh, count 1 2 and 3 but if we write number 3 the child will able to recognize that it is number 3 so we are not teaching the practical things we are just focusing on the rote learning and memorization uh, there is no choice for the child uh, to select the activity resources are there but some of the teachers have kept them in showcases because bachche kharab kar denge to hum isko kya jawab denge wo khatam kaise ho gaya that is the main problem peer learning is there in the schools but still uh, children select their friends and they do the behavior things we are not taking it to the directional ki hum usko positive way mein nahi le ja pa rahe because teacher child ratio itna zyada hai ki aap focus hi nahi kar pate bachcho ke sath next slide please that is the analysis if there is no liberty for the child less outdoor games so no play time parental influence itna kam hai uh, especially in delhi government school or ncd school the parents both the parents are watching and they think that the child is safe for four four hours so they send the child to school and the parents say ma'am hum ghar pahunchne tak itna thak jaate hain hum kuch kuch nahi kar pate ye jo seekh rahe hain wo aapke sath hi seekh rahe hain next slide please uh, and uh, next slide please ma'am I would uh, give some recommendations because I was very happy when the NEP came. Is that I thought that चलो अब कुछ बेहतर हो सकता है शायद. There should be a uniform curriculum for ECC in the entire country. आप इसको situation के हिसाब से या state के हिसाब से modify कर सकते हैं. But एक uniformity होनी चाहिए कि ये सब तो ये curriculum follow करना है. Be it the Anganwadi center, uh, be it the play school, be it the private play school or an MCD school or whatever. MCD schools में भी there is no curriculum. Which has to be followed. Teachers का जो मन करता है वो वो पढ़ाते हैं नहीं मन करता तो नहीं पढ़ा. And as similarly, the Anganwadi centers they have to do the vaccine. Anganwadi worker वो आशा worker होते हैं उनको vaccine लगाने होते हैं उनको policy से तारीफ बात नहीं होती है. तो वो बच्चों को क्या पढ़ाएंगे जब उन्हें खुद ही नहीं पता कि वो पढ़ाएंगे क्या. 
Angamari due to workers and they have to be professionally trained. Teacher child ratio should not be more than one is to sixteen. Ah, ye jo the the mushrooms like uh, play schools which have been developed in the recent decades, they should be controlled by an by an external body or government organization. So government should have guidelines for the teachers. Ya aap usko kitna trained hoga teacher, tabhi aap usko appoint karenge. आपको इतनी फैसिलिटीज होनी चाहिए स्कूल में तभी आप स्कूल को रन करेंगे एंड दैट इज रन इन टू ओवर टाइम देयर आर मेनी थिंग्स हां हां दीस आर द इंप्लीकेशन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ वाइगोस्कियन थ्योरी इन ईसीसी विद रेफरेंस टू एनईपी टीचर इज द मेन टीचर इज द मेन थिंग दैट कैन ब्रिंग द चेंज इफ देयर आर मोर टीचर्स प्रोफेशनली ट्रेन एथिकली साउंड then only we can have the change because any policy document cannot bring the change alone unless we have the teachers infrastructure agar hamare paas nahi hai even though we can change but we have to be professionally sound and they can promote, they can provide cooperative learning they can promote the uh, cultural specific mental tools they can play promote player activities they can focus on the regional languages of the children to promote learning that's all for today these are the references thank you Samra, thank you so much. This is a very valuable piece of research, and I speak as now member of the Delhi Curriculum Reform Committee. I'm going to be requesting for a copy of this because you have given us held a mirror to the reality on the ground, and the reality on the ground, as you quite rightly say, is that um, the curriculum design isn't necessarily appropriate in all contexts. The adversity, yes, the background of the children, sometimes makes it impossible. for the teacher to transact the curriculum your recommendations particularly i find extremely insightful and very very useful so thank you thank you to all four of our participants uh for for this um uh sukhania sonu dakaru and samra anthony how much time do we have Uh, let's take another ten minutes. If you like to ask any specific questions to yes. any of them, there are two three hands I can see. There are attendees who are wanting to ask questions, and uh, maybe we'll take another ten minutes. Let's ask uh, if you like to ask any questions to any of them. Other I'm I'm going to ask uh, one question, and I would like everybody to give me an answer within thirty seconds, if they can, and that will give us give you time to put the questions on chat or. Uh, Can ask those questions. You know, what's coming through is that the agent for change is the teacher, right? It is you who are going to make that change. So my question to you, as educators, uh, has three parts. Number one, what do you feel for ECCD are the skills and competencies that you require as a teacher? number 1 number 2 and this might be sensitive do you feel the training you received whether it was bed bled dled whatever has been effective and sufficient and three the question of teacher capacity building had cropped up earlier how should this be done बारह बजे के बाद कोई टीचर डजेंट वॉन्ट टू स्टे बैक इन स्कूल हमने बहुत कोशिश की है एक बजे के बाद नहीं जी हमने घर जाना है स्कूल रिलीज नहीं करते हैं टीचर्स के लिए सैटरडे संडेज आर ऑफ लिमिट्स प्राइवेट स्कूल में तो ये ऑफ लिमिट्स नहीं होता है सो हाउ डू वी डू दिस कैलेंडर है नहीं ट्रेनिंग एस सी आर टी अपने आप कर रहा है एंड द डायरेक्टरेट अपने आप कर रही है So these are three questions. If I could start with Sukhania, answer any one of them. It doesn't matter. You don't have to answer. Sukhania. Sukhania, you are on mute. Sukhania, you are on mute. Please unmute yourself. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes, what I feel about the question that you've just uh, raised is that uh, yes, we need to be actually uh, very connected to our children, and uh, our whatever we have learned through our 
professional courses, be it, be it or DL it or whichever. Ultimately, they just uh, prepare us the base, you know, prepare the base in our minds for the things that we need to do in our real lives. And sometimes uh, they are theoretical, but in the practical field, we find this picture is quite different. And we have to actually be very sensitive to what the child needs or what are his wants at his age and have, a, have that motherly instinct you know, while addressing the concerns of the child. Probably that would help, you know, that uh, connect would help the, you know, uh, to achieve the real goals that ECCE uh, actually gives us. Because uh, ultimately, uh, no matter what policies are made, at the grassroots level, it is the people, it's the heart that matters the most. Okay. So that's what I have to say. Sonu, would you like to add to that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would like to add a few things in the same answer, like ma'am has already shared. Uh, like Sukanya ma'am also uh, told that it is a, a teacher, if she feels that uh, if she is a motherly by heart, then she can make uh, bring the change in the future uh, children. But uh, I would also say that a B.Ed. or D.Ed. courses are only for two years. But I mean, the years of experience of teaching, we are uh, also requiring a few referral uh, trainings. No doubt, all the organizations are doing. But uh, like uh, we are in the Bharati Foundation, I would like to appreciate the efforts of the training department. Okay. All right. And that give us uh, uh, results. So that is a much better, like such platforms we are having. So this is a bringing a more stability in us to bring that connect of mother and a student, not a teacher and a student, but mother and a student in the primary school. That's a, a, a more important thing in nowadays because uh, the generation is changing on the rapid basis. As the generation is changing and uh, the new techniques and new uh, things uh, should be there with the teachers as well, that can be there only with the trainings and interactions with the other teachers or the colleagues from other organizations. That can bring the uh, methods uh, to the, all of us. Like today the platform is here, we are having the views of each and everyone from the platform. And this is bringing us uh, uh, other ideas and uh, imaginations so that can we can bring the change in our classrooms. That is the most important thing. And uh, another question to your uh, third one, how to deduct that uh, ratio? Like ma'am has already uh, shared in her paper that one is to 16 is there and that should be somewhat, we are having an issue. No doubt there is an issue, but uh, if uh, a teacher is there and she is taking uh, as a care as a mother, she will not be uh, having a, such a problem as uh, handling uh, students in a classroom and dividing them in the different activities can help her to bring the uh, skills in them in the limited time. Okay, so, both... a quick, quick question. Do you feel that your training, yes, because sir. you're, you're uh, uh, a Bharti school teacher, right? Which is why I'm asking. Yes, Do you feel the training that you received in ECCD has been rich enough and relevant enough for you to be able to further develop the children in your care? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I can say that uh, we have uh, enough trainings. Not one training is enough, uh, I would no. say. We are having the trainings on the intervals. Like uh, if one training, we are having uh, us uh, in the... Uh, few portion of ECC, then we uh, try the practices on the same things taught to us. And then we bring our own ideas, then we share in the next platform. That's okay. why I'm saying both the things are necessary. So Trainings that, as well as the webinars and infections. So I think that the government has a lot to learn and perhaps Anthony, the government will be getting back to you to seek that particular support. Dakaru. Yes, ma'am. Any response to any of the three questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as a teacher, uh, I find that um, since even in my brief bio, you have seen that I'm a mother of two. And just as I love them and I care for them, uh, for my children. So even in school, when I'm with my children in school, I must be able to act responsibly too. I must be able to love, I must be able to care for them just as I love my children. And also uh, to create a loving and cozy environment for them so that the learning uh, process becomes, you know, uh, becomes effective even when I teach them. And um, 
teaching uh, uh, teaching children from ages three to uh, three to six it's not an, uh, it's not an easy one it's a very very big challenge and uh, so uh, my suggestion is that when uh, now the NEP 2020 has included uh, ECCD as uh, part of the formal education and I find that now from now on um, more training more training uh, that um, you know especially with regards to including children from various kinds of various kinds uh, must be given to to teachers so that no we must be able to to when we have separate classroom when we have children of those uh, special abilities children we must be able to teach them in such a, a safe and uh, environment for them as well thank you thank you Dakaru. that's really very very useful i'm so glad that you have mentioned that you know perhaps teachers are uh, born as well as made but the fact that the nep has made it clear that um teachers in primary and pre-primary are to be paid the same Okay. It's extremely significant because uh, so far, and nobody wants to teach at this level. I know having been a teacher, I can teach at middle, upper, senior, secondary and beyond. But teaching little children, I would be terrified. I thought, you know, I, it is a much more demanding and specialist, um, uh, you know, area of uh, uh, education than the rest, which is why it needs to be accorded that respect that has been undermined. And I'm delighted that the NEP has. Final two minutes to go, I think. And so Samra, would you like to add to the three questions that we've put today? Yes, ma'am, I would like to ask uh, also the first question. When you said the teachers want to go rush to their home, they don't want to stay back. <laughs> The main thing is uh, we have the maternity benefit amendment like with the schools and other institutions which have more than 50 people working should have a daycare center at their, at their, uh, within their campuses so that teachers uh, can focus, um, can have more focus on their work rather than their families. And if I have a seventh year, seven month old baby at home, it is uh, but obvious that I will rush to home. So why don't we implement all the things together so that I can focus and then I will work with my children. So the, this way we can balance both the things. My family my child and my students also because I, I love children. I am working with them since uh, for the past 11 years and I have taught more than 500 children. You won't believe I have taught more than 500 children. But still, we have a family that 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 we have a so that is the main thing psychologically we have इतना ज़्यादा मतलब फेस हो चुके हैं ना अपनी फैमिलीज़ और जॉब के बीच में कि हम उसको चेंज नहीं कर पाते हैं और मैं बहुत लंबा डिस्कशन कर सकती हूँ इस मसले पे बट टाइम कम है इसलिए बहुत ज़्यादा नहीं बोल सकती समरा ये लास्ट सेंटेंस मुझे समझ नहीं आए आपकी जो आवाज बहुत ही क्रैकल हो रही थी बट थैंक यू ये रेकमेंडेशन तो मैं पर्सनली बताऊंगी मिस्टर सिसोलिया को कि क्रेशेस हैव टू बी अटैच्ड टू स्कूल्स इफ यू वांट टू बिल्ड कैपेसिटी इन योर टीचर्स आप ये नहीं सोच सकते कि बच्चों को छोड़ के टीचर्स आए अपनी कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग करने एंड उनके बच्चे डे केयर सेंटर में रहें आई एब्सोल्युटली अंडरस्टैंड and take your point. I think we have crossed our time limit, Anthony, but um, may I just say it has been a pleasure to meet uh, Sukhanya, Sonu, Dakaru, and Samra. Uh, the papers, research, the focus, the passion has been um, truly inspiring. I would be very grateful personally if you sent me their uh, research documents, and it is going to help what we are attempting to do in Delhi as Dr. Bhiti Pandey mentioned, a great deal. So thank you for the invitation. Thank you for letting me be in your company. Thank you for the learning and take care and stay well. Uh, thank you, Abba Adams, for uh, no, wonderfully moderating the session.
and uh, we will definitely send you their papers we are also planning to come out with the conference report wherein all the presenters papers whether they are getting in top 3 or top 5 whatever the number but all the papers who are presented uh, in in this conference will be the abstracts will be published and we can send you the uh, papers as well not an issue on that so i would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, all our speakers presenters who have presented the wonderful research paper samra samra khan who has uh, presented on tools of the mind from uh, jamia millia islamic university delhi on let the light shine dakaru bare teacher who is uh, from meghalaya need an awareness of ccd sonu karla teacher from uh, satyabadi other senior secondary school chogawa punjab early education nature versus nurture suganya bardwaj teacher from kamrup assam i think it, there has been a lot of generation of interest among the participants uh who are attending and our response team has also been responding based on your response being to the attendees as well in case if there are any more questions to the, from the attendees please feel free to put in the chat we can uh, you know respond as and we see your questions so once again thank you to all the speakers thank you abba for joining us as a moderator it has been always wonderful to hear you and also uh, it was really good to see how you are moderator and asked some of the basic questions and you know uh, reignited the interest pccd uh, because of this new education policy because of the addition of these uh, you know uh, few years into the school education system it, it is a welcome uh, welcome change but at the same time it brings us with a lot of challenges with uh, like some of the research has shown untrained teachers we cannot afford to manage with volunteers because i personally believe our best teacher should be with the you know the primary education system and not with the with the colleges that doesn't mean i am not undermining uh, another colleges but if you are not able to get a good foundation to our children uh, as one of the papers how are we making them shine the light will be you know finished at the end of uh, the primary level education so thank you very much to all of you so before all of you disperse for a session break or a screen break as we can call it we like to launch two polls so that we just get some ideas about uh, the participants how they are thinking on some of the points that has been coming so far uh, samin uh, you would like to launch or you want me to launch you can go ahead boss okay so on this session 2 uh, that is on it just a kind of a simple question to see how the josh among the participants as uh, they say in the army and there are some of our colleagues who are colonels who are also logged in they always ask how is the josh this is just to know how is the josh among the attendees let's see i hope it is visible to all of you and we have got uh, already the responses coming up i will share the poll results as soon as we close in we have another 30 seconds more to close in the poll <clears throat> request all the attendees to answer the poll question yeah we have almost uh, 35 percentage participants attended others please please put in your answers click on any of them we have 400 plus participants but we have not got 100 percent age participation in the survey and i am just to close because we have crossed one minute can i have some more participants presenting all right i am closing it now we just got nearly 50 percent age taking part and that's the results that you might be seeing on your screen now go back to your early years what was your idea about numbers you had gut feeling of more or less 28 percentage you always could qualify quantify numbers 25 percentage more or less depend on what it was about it tells you that you know uh, quite majority of you would have said yes there are basics among the children like uh, as we talk to some of our teachers during our training 
most of the time what happens in uh, in the local languages st students start speaking they are able to you know speak quite well and they are very fluent and as some of uh, some of us say they are very talkative in that in their young age but the moment they come to the school they stop speaking so the basic speaking skills go down so these are some of the issues that we have to manage at eccd how are we able to take from some of the things which they are already good at how we can strengthen that and for that when we need the best teachers that is available uh, you know in the in the primary education system and now as per the new education policy the foundational classes should be having the best cannot afford to manage with the wall indias otherwise we are going to have a bleak future in the country for taking up all these people coming as the future adults and taking up various activities and various jobs so i would like to thank once again our moderator ab adams and all the speakers of the session and uh, also the other earlier speakers and panelists who have been already there with us we are going to have a screen break at this time we will resume the convoke at 3 o'clock with another uh, very interesting session and that session is on education in the times of the new normal with specialized special focus on girl child so we are all in the new normal and let's see what the speakers have to say and uh, um, mrs saida imam is going to be the keynote speaker for the session whereas dr maithili associate professor of clinical psychology guwahati medical college assam would be the moderator with along with the other speakers who are going to be there so i would like to wish uh, all of you take a good break take a screen break at the same time would like to invite all of you again to session 3 starts at 3 o'clock and please try to log in at least 5 to 10 minutes before the session so that we are able to start on time so that we uh, we would like to close this morning session by thanking you once again jai hind bye bye